Hey everybody, this is Fran Frischella, draft expert and basketball junkie. To everybody who's watching, let's get our friends at General Manager Games the subscribers they deserve. Just press that red subscriber button and immerse yourself in sports AI through GM Games content. And on Twitter, it's GM underscore games. Let's get after it. Let's go. Uh, bringing you some more Louisville Cardinal basketball. So <clears throat> you guys know if you're keeping up with the stream, uh, a couple streams ago, we left Auburn to take over our dream job at Louisville, taking over the Cardinals. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a rebuild. They were in the NIT, so we're trying to pick it up from there. Uh, they got a couple of very promising freshmen. We've got a pretty decent recruit class built out in this first year. We did have to cut a couple of players to free up some of these scholarships. Uh, so, as of right now, this is our class. It looks pretty strong, in my opinion. Uh, I think these guys will fit in well as long as nobody transfers out or goes pro early or anything like that. We should start looking good next year and, uh, you know, straight up after that. Uh, I do want to say one thing right at the beginning of the stream. I just had to, as I was setting up to get ready, I just noticed GM Games has hit 100 followers on Twitch. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Uh, anybody that's already following, thank you so much. Anybody that's not following yet, make sure that you're subscribing on YouTube, following on GM Games, uh, on Twitch, uh, whatever you need to do so that so that you're getting the content as it comes out. But so into the game, we've got these four recruits. We do still have two scholarships available. We've only got one offer outstanding. That was right over here to Thomas Sawyer. Uh, I think that I'd said I was going to go through offline and check out some of the other camps and see if there was anybody else that we really wanted to offer. Uh, but now that I think about it, uh, I would rather spread out the recruiting a little bit more. So this other scholarship that we have open, we're just going to carry into next year. So uh, I think I told you guys that the streams were going to be coming uh you know, fast and heavy over the next couple of days. My wife's out of town. My kids, two of the three of them are with their grandparents. Uh, so all I've got is the oldest one, and he's out playing with the neighborhood kids right now. So I don't know exactly how long the stream will go tonight. Uh, I don't have a plan, but we're I definitely want to get through this first season. And uh, hopefully my assistant coach comes home from playing soon, and maybe he'll want to hang out with us for a while. I don't know. We'll, we'll just go where the night takes us. That's my plan. Uh, my plan is to have no plan. So we do have Thomas Sawyer as an outstanding offer. That would be another guard. Uh, I think he's a nice long-term four-year type player at the point guard position. If we can get him. But we are very much into... Uh, I mean, we're into October. We're just about to be into the season here. So it'll be interesting because we do have the outgoing uh, point guard who's like four and a half stars. Leon Baker looks pretty good. Chris Ross actually... Uh, as a senior scholarship shooting guard, he also looks solid, in my opinion, with this with this rating. Uh, and then we got Chris Wright and Jason Alexander. I expect both of them to be solid. Uh, we're extremely weak at the center position. Let's take a look. I, I think I set up the depth chart already. I don't remember for sure. Baker, Ross, Wright, Alexander, and Williams. Yes. Yeah, that'll work for the first year. We have no centers, even in our rotation. Not even getting minutes. Who's, oh, okay, Alexander and Williams. I was going to say, like, who is, oh, Alexander's playing 40 minutes a game. That's not ideal. Can we find him some time? Uh, at the very least, let's... to this and that I get some a little bit of time so he's having to play small forward oh uh -uh -uh. yikes he can't really oh but Dearborn's more of a point guard um I mean, we're at least giving Alexander a little bit of a break here. He's having to play center there. 
Ooh, all right, let's give him a break there. Now, you still having to play 34 minutes a game, but it's better than 40, I suppose. Uh, but the rest of everything else should be good. I think we got our coaches assigned. I think we've got our strategy set up. I think we've, uh, let's see, Murphy recruiting. Joiner on practice yet. Take a look real quick at the practice plan before we get going. We've got this set up. We're running the flex on the high post. So everything should be good to go. Ready to get this first season out of the way, start bringing in our recruits, and uh, build this program you know, like we always intended to do. Only took us 20 years to get here. Hey, knock it off. The dog's back here trying to eat some... Uh, um... Andy! Hold on a second. got to stop this from happening. Come down here, Bob. You can be on my stream. All right. Andy, call the dog, please. Andy. Give him some treats or something. Can't have the dog eating all the musical instruments here. Maybe the assistant coach can take care of this issue. Let's check out what we got going on in the inbox. Scouting reports, little red shirt reminder, season begins. All right, here we go. Game time, boys. We got a couple of senior guards. They could do some work. We've got some promising players at the forward position. Uh, and hopefully, you know, our our um, backup power forward can hold down that center position to get us at least through this year in a reasonable manner. You know, it might not it might not be perfect. Sorry, that just wasn't going to fly with the dog eating the instruments. All right, now we're on track. Assistant coach taking care of the animals off screen. Doing the behind the screen, behind the scenes work. Oh, no, he's back. James, come get this dog now. You can. Grab him by the collar. Sorry. You know, this is uh, the good and the bad of the wife being gone. You know, the good is... I got more time, a little bit more freedom. The bad is uh, she's not here to, to cover up anything. Come, put your hand in his collar, just hold him, and walk upstairs. He'll follow you. Give him some treats when you get up there, and shut the door. All right, so we'll see how that works. All right, first game, guys. First game as the head coach of the Louisville Cardinals. Let's get it going. L1C4, L's up. Ooh, nice little win. 25 points. Look at that. The freshman, Alexander, leading the way, going over 20 points right off the bat. Yeah, what's up, Lord Clamel? Glad to have you here. A uh, little bit of a Friday night stream here. So let's see. Ross, Williams, and Alexander. Alexander, whew, it's a heck of a game out of him. Uh, right, you know, slow start for the freshman there. Not a lot out of Baker, the senior point guard. A lot of minutes. Uh, not, I mean, decent assists. Limited turnovers. That's nice. But out of the starters, he's the lowest on the plus minus. So that's kind of interesting coming right out of the gate. But it's always nice to win your first one. So let's get cracking on a Friday night, guys. This is going to be exciting. I don't know. I don't know how this team will do this year. I think that we can meet uh, at least most of these goals. I don't think it'll be so bad that we get fired or anything. Certainly not after one year. Uh, I don't even think it'll be a bad year. I think we'll actually do fairly decent. So, um... Alright, no worries. My son found a skateboard in the front yard. I think it'll be alright. Ooh, the Salukis of Southern Illinois coming into the KFC Yum Center where the Louisville Cardinals will play host. Let's see if we can get Baker on track here. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, Leon Baker. Okay, he filled up the stat sheet at least. Ross with 22. David Williams, that's... I think that's the uh, the upperclassman that's playing uh, center for us. So he rocked a double-double there. Got a handful of emails here that has to be some letters being signed, and it is all four of our signees signed the letter of intent, or I'm sorry, all four of our commitments signed the letter of intent, so no academic problems there. So we'll keep on cruising. We'll see if we get that other guard to commit. Uh, I don't think he's not like a do or die commit or anything. Hey, thanks, Lord Clamel. Uh, nice, he said. Nice transition from Auburn to the Cards. Uh, you know, we got a little bit lucky, and I, I kind of called it in that last Auburn stream. If you remember, before we got into the NCAA tournament, uh, I saw Louisville in the NIT. I was like, there might be an opening. Like this could be the year. So there was a moment in that stream, if you saw it, where I. Kind of, I don't want to say called our, called our shot or anything, but uh, definitely saw the opportunity opening up. And then when they made the offer, like, we just had to do it. Uh, and I was extremely lucky to come into this Louisville program and have uh, these two freshman recruits that we have. This these two forwards, uh, I really think they're gonna be you know the basis of what we do here. I think they're both four-year players. I think they're both going to be extremely talented by the time they graduate. I think they can both contribute immediately. You've already seen it out of Alexander. Uh, so now Louisville versus Sacred Heart. Another home game for the Cardinals. Another big win. And there's Alexander. Like I was saying, I don't know who Kendrick Cleveland is. Uh, but then you saw David Williams again. So my, my assumption is those are probably all big men. Uh, we probably tore up Sacred Heart on the inside, and that tends to happen when you play against uh, less talented teams. You know, a, a lot of these uh, not Power Five schools, you know, they got these guys in the post that are like, you, you know, either undersized or they got plenty of size and can't move it around. Uh, so a lot of times you'll see them get tore up on the inside, and I think that's what happened there. All right, so a nice little 3-0 start. <clears throat> now we got Southern. Hopefully should be another win. I don't remember. I'm sure we looked at the schedule last time. I can't remember if I made any changes. I think that I left it fairly easy because we don't really have our team and our roster set up yet. Oh, what a brutal loss. So see, that's the kind of crap that happens. This is the kind of stuff that got the last coach fired, I'm sure. Lose to... Was that a winless Southern team? That was pathetic. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Let's stop back by later. Hopefully we'll be into the second season and nonsense like this won't be happening anymore. So, right, the freshman forward. Looks like he got in a bit of foul trouble. Three-pointers. They went... Oh. Well, it never helps when you shoot 16% from three. So I don't know what in the hell Chris Ross was doing, but he went 0 for 8 from 3. So even though he ended up with a double-double, um, bro, <laughs> either hit one or stop shooting. Jesus, that's rough. All right, but that's the kind of nonsense that happens in the first year when you're taking over a bad team. Uh, I don't guess I can be, I don't guess I can be all that surprised, really. But we're going to keep on pushing. All we got to do is win like 15 games. We already signed a four-star recruit. That's done. 15 games should be a no-brainer. Uh, the other ones, top three in the conference, that'd be tough. Sweet 16 is probably very iffy. And so it'll probably come down to whether or not we increase or decrease school prestige. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I responded to that comment on YouTube. Uh, you know, the, the big difference there is I left Auburn fairly stacked. Uh, I'd, I'm very excited to see how they do this season. Uh, you'll remember Tulane won a national championship the second year after I left, I think. So, I mean, I, I left Tulane fairly stacked. Uh, Nebraska fired me, so they can kind of piss off. Uh, but then we left Auburn pretty stacked. I think they'll do good for a number of years. Uh, so, I definitely didn't leave anybody with the cupboard bare, with the exception of Florida A&M, uh, they, were, they were not really that great when I left. 
Oh, Arizona State beat us at home, and that's a back-to-back bad losses at home. So it looks like maybe 15 wins isn't that guaranteed. This might be a roller coaster of a season. Alexander, Ross, and Baker all played well, but we can't beat the Arizona Sun Devils at home. Uh, Yikes. Could be a long first season here. Uh, Hopefully it's not that bad, though. As long as we can get like two out of the five goals that they set for us, really all we need to do is get 15 wins. We've already got a recruit that, that meets the requirement. If we can just get to 15 wins, then we're fine. You know, we'll drop from 100 down to 90% job security, and we'll be good to go. Yeah, and, you know, the big thing at Auburn was Corey Gray, to be honest. Like, everybody else did pretty much what I expected, but if you went back and looked at Corey Gray, I don't know if you saw uh, the str- the last stream I did when I went back and looked at the records, but Corey Gray was the leading scorer in Auburn history by, like, 400 points. Uh, I think he was up there on assists. I mean, the, the guy was ridiculous. Especially, like, if you go and look at single-game performances, I think he had, like, four of the top six or seven or something. So, I mean, yeah, I I think he was a top 20 recruit. I don't even think he was top 15. So, you know, sometimes those kind of guys, they just work out. Uh, And he stuck around for four years, so, like, I got extremely lucky. But it's a mix. You know, I I don't guess you can straight up call it just lucky. Yeah, the 54-point game, I think it was. Uh, I don't think you can just call it lucky. Like, if you bring in enough of that caliber player, you're going to have some that exceed the expectations, and that's what happened. Uh, So it's just a matter of bringing in enough of them. But to bring them in, I mean, I brought him in in my very, very first recruiting class there. That's the lucky part of it is to bring him in so early. All right, so hopefully we can get Southern Utah. Yeah, 20-point win there. Uh, Looks like we suffered an injury. No, just a strained hamstring out of a backup, so I think we'll be just just fine there. Ooh, David Williams, who's starting, is actually a sophomore. So we got sophomore, freshman, freshman, and then a senior backcourt. So how heavy are we laying into the plays here? 60%. Okay, that's about right. I don't want to go any lower than 60, unless I had, like, all freshmen. If I was running it, like... Duke or UK and had all five freshmen or something. Uh, but with senior guards, I mean, you could almost argue that I should bump it up. I'm not, cer- not, not certain. Oh, it's going to be a long year. We're only six games in. We're four and two. Losses to Arizona State and Southern. I don't even know who Southern is. Uh, Stephen F. Austin. I mean, if we can lose the Southern, we can lose to anybody. So I don't guess I can get too comfortable. But oh, this is actually a neutral court game also, and they appear to be decent. So uh, this one's a toss-up. Oh, three points. Chris Wright, the freshman, leading the way with 18 big ones. And we move on to the second round of whatever in the world tournament we're in uh, to play Portland in another neutral court game. The Portland Pilots. All right. Portland Pilots. Uh, Probably another toss-up. Oh, no, not a toss-up at all. Alexander that time. So back-to-back games where the freshman took over. David Williams, the sophomore, doing big things. So, you know, like I've said, right, Alexander, Williams. Uh, I'm, I'm adding Williams into that at this point. They're really going to be the future of this team, along with the class that we just brought in. Uh You know, this year might be rocky. Next year should be a little better. By year three, we'll be good to go here. But now we're going to get the South Carolina Gamecocks in the championship of the whatever it is tournament. I'd assume it's a championship. The Cardinals take it home, baby. Whatever it is, championship champions. Uh, No idea what that tournament was, but we're the winners. So we're we're gonna put a whatchamacallit on the on the trophy uh, trophy plaque trophy case whatever. It's legit gonna be like a whatchamacallit the candy bar. So seven and two, a little bit of a rocky start. 
but we we ran through that tournament all right on a neutral court. Oh, Agalia, please don't look. <laughs> I'm gonna hide my eyes. I figure I should just hide my eyes and go right past this. Number three, Kentucky coming in. They're gonna come into the Yum Center, and they're probably gonna do a number on us here. They're probably gonna do a number on us, and it's, and it's going to hurt my ego and my soul. I hate losing to this team. Absolutely loathe. Oh, Chris Ross. Woo. L's up, baby. UK, get out of here. Yeah, Southern might be able to come in and push us around on the Yum Center, but Kentucky Wildcats, that's a no-fly zone. Go back to Lexington, a bunch of losers. 69-64. The Cardinals over the Cats. Nice win, nice win. Number three in the country, Kentucky Wildcats. Nice. All right, eight and two. We got new life on the season. Big win over our rival. Not in the conference play yet. Be exciting to get there. John. Kula Bali. Interesting. Interesting uh, name there. Oklahoma State doing some work. All right. Whew. Look at that. We're back in the rankings, folks. You know, you, you lose to Southern and things happen, but then you beat the number three Wildcats, uh, and suddenly you're right back into the top 25. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. We lost some weird games. The Kentucky wins, obviously, the big one that we got. They bounced back pretty hard against New Mexico State there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what this team does. Oh, look at that. There's the Auburn game. We we knew we saw it. Oh, man. I forgot about that. That's the big one that was on the schedule. We're headed into Auburn, and I expect Auburn to blow the doors off. They should beat us by 20. Maybe worse. I mean, Auburn should be a Final Four team. They're at home. Look at that. 20, I called it. Look at Delhi. 28 points. Shh. He's not messing around. Look at that. 28 with nine rebounds. Who's home? Jamil Holmes, the freshman point guard. There's Perry Leach also starting. Cheryl. I think he's another freshman starting at the power forward. So, I mean, we brought in a heck of a class. We left Auburn uh, in a very, very good spot. But Ben Deli obviously leading the way. Uh, backups didn't do much. Chambers was all not re nobody. None of the backups were really that great. Uh, Justin Logan also kind of disappointed, although he did have a nice plus minus. Uh, but, yeah, Auburn's legit. Uh, well, the kids say AF. Legit AF. They're going to make a Final Four run for sure. That was never close. Never should have been. Uh, went exactly as I expected it to. But still, we're 8-3. and three. Not too shabby. We got one nice win under our belts. Uh, you know, something to put on the resume when we send it out to the prospective tournament selectees, selectors in March. Yara Polk Sitelnikov <laughs> in Texas? Are you sure? I don't think there's ever been anybody named Yara Spladoke in Texas. Ever. Uh, I don't think they're allowed across the border. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's see what let's see what we got in the old inbox. Uh oh. Post game incident. Oh, that was last week though. Sunny Dearborn. Well, you can knock that off immediately.
Alright. He apologized right away, so we're good to go there. Eight and three. A third of the way through the season. I'm not sure if we got any more games. What's up? Just shut it. Distract him. Take him outside. Alright, here comes conference play. We're headed into pit. Eight and three Louisville Cardinals, seven and four Pittsburgh Panthers at the Peterson Event Center. We're now how we play some of these like average teams on the road is going to tell us a lot about how this season's going to go. And if I had to take a wild guess, like I'd bet on Pitt here. One by twenty-three. Kind of surprising they beat us by more than Auburn. All right, so now we got two guys smarting off. And uh, Sonny Dearborn, you apologize. I said you are going to do better and didn't do it, so you can have a seat. Costello, I'll give you an opportunity. We're going to have to fix our matrix. God, it's going to... All right, sweet. I thought I was going to put Alexander back to 40 minutes a game. I was like, no. We're going to leave it at that. I'm not going to get too uh, worked up over this season. It's not our guys. I think we're going to do enough to not lose like too much on the um, job security. We've already got eight wins. We'll need seven in-conference wins. And we'll be all right. Uh, job security wise so <clears throat> though I'm definitely excited guys I'm definitely excited to get through this season get into next season see what this recruiting class looks like uh, and see what we can do in this next season and like I said I don't know what what the stream will end up being tonight but I'd love to get through this season and next now the Listening to what's going on upstairs with the dogs might make it difficult. Um, I'd be more than happy to let him down here if he wasn't over there chewing on my instruments. Oh, fell back out of the rankings. Down to 8-4. and four. And now I think I said we're on the road against Florida State, so that's probably, uh, probably another tough one. I mean, if Pitt drubbed us like that, I'd imagine Florida State will probably do the same. 15 points. Right, Williams. Baker. Like, Baker is just not much of a scorer. I haven't seen him doing anything this year. I'm going to look at the stats here in a second. Uh, the scholarship will just be left. Lord Clamel's asking in chat if I, if I just leave the open scholarship like I have it, if it'll get automatically filled, or if I'll still have it. I'll still have it. So, I can use it uh, for a transfer if I wanted to, but I really don't don't like doing that unless there's just... I, I normally don't even look at the transfers, to be honest. Um, I feel better about bringing in freshmen. I feel like I got a better gauge on like how long they'll be at my school, how they'll actually turn out. Uh, but uh, if you have that scholarship available at the end of a season going into the next, you can use it on a transfer, uh, which is like... So, like, say, like, going into a season, you filled all of your scholarships, and you have two seniors that are on scholarship. So you're going to get two scholarships at the beginning of the year, right? But you won't be able to use any of them for transfers because you have to have a scholarship available immediately to bring in a transfer. So having the one scholarship carry over, I could at least look at transfers for the next season. Uh, but I probably won't. But, yeah, it, it will not autofill. It, it, the only thing in this game that'll autofill, it'll give you walk-ons, but it'll never autofill your scholarships unless you turn on some kind of AI recruiting, which I assume this game has, but I've never even looked. Uh, recruiting's, recruiting is college basketball as far as I'm concerned, so 
um, I'm sure I'm surely not going to be playing a college basketball game and not controlling every aspect of the recruiting. So here we go, an interesting game on the road at Boston College. They look pretty crummy, uh, but you know we're not perfect either. Headed on the road to play there. This one might be a toss-up. This is, you know, I expected to lose those first two games on the road. This is the first one that might be a toss-up that might tell us something about how the rest of the season might work out. Ah, and we lose by three, so that figures. Lost by three. Uh, you know, the good news is we ought to have nine home games, and we only need seven wins to get to 15. Michael Costello again. All right, you know, I, I tried. I gave you a chance. Let's get over here, let the computer fix the matrix. Costello is out. Uh, 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 uh. Who else? Was it Dearborn that was making so much noise? Whatever. Not going to worry about it this season, like I said. Not our guys. I'm going to keep powering through and hopefully we can get back uh, on our home court. Oh, God. All right, so we are on our home court, but we got number six, Syracuse. So we're pretty hit or miss, but we did take care of Kentucky at home, although we lost to Southern and uh, Arizona State at home. So I feel like this is probably still leaning toward a loss. Yeah, seven points. But Alexander did well. It's good to see those young guys doing well. You know, I really think those young guys are going to turn it around. Uh, my biggest disappointment so far, honestly, is in those two senior guards. They've been trash. Baker's doing basically nothing. Ross, not much of anything either. Uh, so... I don't know. It's been pretty ugly. Now we head on the road to Virginia Tech. So, given that we're not great, we're going to have a tough time at home against the top teams. We need some of these um, road games against bad teams in order to hit our 15 wins. So let's see if we can grab one here against the Hokies. No, th another three-point loss. My God, it's brutal. Two very, very winnable road games. Back-to-back. -back. Well, not back-to-back. -back. We had the home game in between. Um, but, guys, we're 0-5 in conference. So it's looking pretty dangerous at this point. I don't know where the team is that beat the number three Kentucky Wildcats at home. But uh, we need them to show up quick and in a hurry so we can get this thing on track. We're about halfway through the season, and we're only, like, I mean, we've lost five straight. So there's just no way around that. We need to win a game. Oh, and I don't think it's going to be here with number 11, Florida State, coming into the Yum Center. Oh, my gosh. The first year. You know, that's, to be honest, like, I wanted to move on from Auburn and bring it into Louisville to close out the stream because I think we're getting close to a new version of this game. So that was one of the reasons. But the other reason, like, it's just more fun in the first couple of years when you got to struggle a little. Like, Auburn was going to win a lot of games. A lot of games. Not going to be a struggle. This is a struggle. Like this, you never know game to game what's going to happen. Uh maybe, maybe we pull this one off. You know, we beat Kentucky at home. Let's get that home court advantage. Let's get, let's get our first ACC win here in a big way against the Seminoles. No. <laughs> I tried to jinx it, but it, it just isn't happening. We don't have the horses this year. Uh, and we're 0-6 in the ACC now. So, what is this incident? Michael Costello again? I thought he was already suspended. Dude. Two weeks. Next time he smarts off, I'm just going to cut him. I don't need any of that crap. Once upon a time, folks, we were 8-3. and three. 
Virginia beat Duke. I didn't even see it. I'm wallowing in my sorrow over here. Oh, by the way, what's up, Blaze? Glad to have you on, buddy. I assume you're off work. Here we go. Home game against a not-ranked opponent. Let's get our first ACC win, please. If we can't win here, we're in deep crap. I mean, not really. We won't get fired or anything, but um, we we won't hit any of our goals if we don't win right here. Uh, except for the uh, sign of four-star player. There we go. Chris Wright, the freshman with 31. Oh, yeah. All right, we're, we're still alive. 15 wins is still obtainable. I mean, we, all of our home games have been against... All of our conference home games have been against pretty good teams. Yeah, I'm doing good, buddy. Uh, I don't know exactly how long the stream's going to go tonight, but the wife is out of town. Uh, my oldest boy is the only one here, so we're going to try to make it last. Um, we'll just see. I have no idea how it's going to go. It's been a it's been an interesting journey already. Went from eight and three to this. I uh, had a dog try to eat my uh, my bongos over there. So you know, you never know what's going to happen on a Friday night on the GM Games Twitch stream. But now we got the Dukies coming into the Yum Center. Oh, and the Yum Center, the home team. Does it? Leon Baker finally showed up. David Williams, the sophomore power forward, showed up. And we get a seven-point win against Duke. So, uh, I don't know what they call it in your neck of the woods, but where I'm from, we call that a winning streak. Back-to-back -back wins for the Louisville Cardinals. Puts us back at 10-9, and 2-6 and six in conference play. So, we finally avoided uh, top 10 teams at home. And we picked up a couple of wins. So now we get yet another chance on the road against a fairly mediocre team. Uh, we've done this twice already. We came away with two three-point losses. So let's see. Can we string together a third win and get this thing back on track? Back on the good side of, uh, of that 50-50. Like, I don't know where it's going to go. Come on. Come on, cards. L's up. The Cardinals, the Demon Deacons at Wake Forest. Can we pull it off? Not even a little bit. Wake Forest pulls out the 11-point victory. And we're headed home with another loss. That drops us to 2-7 and seven in the league. we got to be one of the worst teams in the ACC right now. Look at Tulane still doing, still doing work. Two and seven, man. That sucks. Probably got nine games left. And we really need to go five and four. <laughs> it's like, oh, we got to sh... Uh, it's gone. <laughs> oh, we won... No, we lost again. <laughs> we try. You know, we, we do what we can do, but... Uh, this team doesn't have a lot of talent. I don't know what to say about it. it certainly doesn't have enough talent to, to compete in a league like this. We'll check out those ACC standings. We're at... Oh, we're not quite at the bottom. Miami's worse. Didn't Miami just win a national championship? Like, aren't are they the ones that beat us out at Auburn? I can't remember right off the bat. Uh, the ACC is a little bit top heavy though. Florida State, North Carolina, Syracuse, Clemson. Uh, the kind of scary thing is I don't think we've played North Carolina or Clemson yet, so we could have one, two to four games against the very top of the conference here. Uh, yikes. We're looking scary. That Blaze, when you ask about league table, that's it, right? That's what you were looking for? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so two and seven. We need five more wins. We got nine games. We got to go five and four. Let's take a look at the dashboard and see what the schedule looks like. I'll tell you whether or not we're going to make it. All right, at Clemson, that's a loss. NC State at home's a win. At North Carolina's a loss. Wake Forest at home's a, we got more than we got more than nine games, right? We got eleven games left, so it's a twenty-game conference schedule. All right, so we got one, two, three, 
four. I think we've got at least four wins in us. Uh, we could drop any one of these winnable home games, but then we've also got at Georgia Tech and at Miami, and maybe even at Notre Dame that are that are opportunities. So, guys, I think if I had to take a wild guess, we're gonna end up on the nose, fifteen wins this season. On the nose. And then maybe we can pick up an ACC tournament and um, maybe we can pick up an ACC tournament, grab another win. Or, I mean, this is I mean, it's certainly not an NCAA team. I don't think it's an NIT team. So if we can jump in, we're going to get smashed at Clemson. If we can jump into like the CBI or CIT or whatever it is and steal another win or two, uh, you know, that might get us to like 16. 17 is the absolute ceiling for this team, though. Uh, but we'll be at 15 wins when the season's over. When the regular season's over. Oh, close one. We tried. Wright and Williams and Alexander. That's uh, two freshmen and a sophomore. They're leading the way. And once again, Leon Baker just completely absent. I have no idea why this guy's rated where he is. Let's take a look at the stats real quick. Uh, they wanted me to get 15 wins, which is why I'm, I'm harping on it, and I think that's exactly where we're going to end up. But yeah, they wanted uh, Sweet 16, top three of the conference, uh, 15 wins, improved prestige, and sign a four-star recruit. I signed a four-star recruit. I'm trying to get 15 wins. If I can get those two, I'm obviously not getting top three in the conference or a Sweet 16, uh, and I'm not improving prestige. But if I can get to 15 wins, I'll only lose about 10% of my job security. So look at this. Why is this guy four and a half stars? He's playing 32 minutes a game, scoring seven a game. Uh, basically, a, not even a two-to-one assist-to-turnover ratio. He's a little bit below that. I mean, I guess he's a decent rebounder for a guard. Shooting 32% from three, only 44% overall. Only 76% from free throw. Like, what is full? What is four and a half stars about that dude? He's terrible. He's terrible. That's why these scouting... Like, you can't trust this crap. What's up, Breeze? Glad to have you, buddy. I'm going back to stats to see what's looking good. Ross is actually scoring well. Chris Wright scoring well. Jason Alexander, David Williams, all of them are doing. They're, they're carrying their weight. Uh, Alexander and Williams are not rebounding hard enough. Maybe that's where Baker is picking up a little bit. Maybe that's where Baker's pulling up a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, we're trusting the process here. All right, so NC State, uh, I think we've got about eight winnable games here. Like I said, I, I expect to win five of them. Uh, so this is where this starts. NC State Wolfpack coming into the KFC Yum Center to play the Louisville Cardinals. And Louisville takes care of business. Chris Wright. MVP, a freshman. Baker's ranking nationwide before he was recruited. Let's take a look. <clears throat> Jump over to the dashboard, check out Leon Baker. Into the player profile, he was the 21st ranked recruit when he got um, when he committed to Louisville. Says he's got uncanny ability to see passing lanes, and why is he averaging six assists a game? It's terrible. Last year he only averaged four. Oh, hold on, yeah, four. Uncanny ability to see. get out of here. He's never had a game better than 11 assists. Good. 
talented passing small forwards can get 11 assists in a game here and there. Well, that can't be your career high if you want to be a four and a half. Get out of here. This dude's not even getting drafted. No way. Ross might. He can actually score. Leon Baker's not getting drafted. Mm. This should very much not be a winnable game. UNC probably going to take care of business here. Thirteen and seven, seven and three in the ACC. They're having a good season, and we are not. And we got smoked. It's the usual usual suspects leading the way in the game, and we've got another post game incident report with Sonny Dearborn again. All right, so uh, Costello's already on his last strike. Now here's the last strike for Dearborn. So you got a similar top 20 player, four-star, playing like crap. Uh, I'd be interested to know how he did in his camp. I really, really feel like the camp is, uh, the camp is to me, the most important thing. If I'm evaluating players, uh, I don't want to say the most important. It's, it's, a good, it's a good solid 50-50 between recruit rating and camp. Like a guy that was, say... 22nd overall and completely irrelevant in a camp and a guy that was like 200th overall but top 25 at a camp I'd put them about equal so uh, you know it, and I mean it all you know it varies on personal experience what you've seen what you're comfortable with but uh, you know the camps are, are huge Sonny Deer oh no 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 it says it's an injury. That's actually a unique little quirk in the game. That's just because he's suspended right now. Top 25 at Georgia, really. But, oh, oh no, no, no. No, 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 no. You didn't have a top 20 player that went to the Georgia Superstar camp. No way. George, the Georgia Superstar camp is for guys that are like two, three hundred and below. Because the, the top hundred or two hundred go to Indy, and then the next top hundred to two hundred go to East Coast Jams. And then after that, those are the guys that go to Georgia. Unless you're talking about the Southeast camp. But that's at Memphis. Four more wins, guys. We need four more wins. And we don't absolutely have to have it. It's not like I don't think they would fire us, but four more wins would make me feel really good. Oh, PB21's coming on Steam next week? Nice. Breeze, I know you've been waiting for, for Pro Basketball 21, haven't you, buddy? Uh, what kind of what kind of dynasty are you gonna set up? Which team will you play as and what's so if you're playing pro basketball what's your strategy do you like to what's up chris glad to have you back uh breeze do you do you like to like build your team out of the draft or you try to build out a free agency is there a position you focus on what do you do in pro basketball demon deacons coming into the yum center uh they beat us when we went into their place we need to return the favor here this is the second of the games that i was talking about are winnable so we still need four wins, and we've got about seven winnable games. Let's get another one here at home. It's a, it's important to win the home ones. Yay! Oh, five points. Williams and Alexander. You know, as long as two out of those top three are our young guys, I feel good about the future of this team. I don't know what in the world the last coach was doing recruiting-wise. Uh, he picked some good freshmen. The sophomore and junior classes are, well, I mean, well, David Williams is okay as a sophomore. Alexander and Wright are good freshmen. There, there is, there actually is no junior class. 
Uh, I forgot to mention that there is no junior class at this school. I'm going to have to cut players next year to open up scholarships, except for the one that I already have opened. Twelve and twelve, three more wins to to feel decent about this year. It won't be a great year, but it'll be a it'll be a decent, you know, eh, we didn't screw it up kind of year. Then we bring in our recruiting class and start making things happen. That is the plan. Ooh, well, Yukon South Florida action there, eighty seven seventy nine. 12 and 12 in the middle of February. You know, when we started off 8 and 3, uh, 12 and 12 in the middle of February really wasn't on my radar. But here comes another tough game uh, against a Virginia squad that's having a season similar to us. Uh, they're just one game over 500. They're coming into our place. Uh, this is the third of the eight winnable games. So far, we're 2 and 2. And this one might be tight. This one might be tight. Let's see what happens. Oh, no, not tight at all. Leon Baker finally showed up. Thanks for coming. Four and a half star senior point guard. Okay. But anyway, there's a third win. So we're up to 13 and 12. Still a handful of very, very winnable games left. Winning the first three out of the eight that I was eyeing. Uh... We might be able to pull out 16 in the regular season here. Who Knicks, Cavs, Kings, Nets, or Suns? Whew. I don't know. I kind of like building teams that have never had anything. I think the Kings would be cool. The Suns have had their time, but I don't think they've won a championship either, right? I think both of those would be pretty cool. Uh, Cavs don't do much for me. The Knicks could be interesting to like rebuild a dynasty. Net, the Nets have a cool color. I like the black and white uniforms. But like tradition-wise, they don't do much for me. Oh, the dude from San Diego State leading the Norton. Ben Deli up to number 10. Love to see that. His senior year. Yeah, I mean, the Kings have... The Kings have Fox and Bagley, but, like, Fox and Bagley's not winning a championship. I mean, Fox and Bagley's all right, but it's not like LeBron and AD. Oh, the Nets have Kyrie and KD, so that's very true. Add one, add one player to the Nets, and that's real dangerous. All right, so number seven coming into the Yum Center, we're probably gonna eat it here, folks. Clemson ought to run us out of the gym, but. We did knock off the number three Wildcats earlier in the season, so you never know. Stranger things have happened. Ah, oh, there it is. Those little finger guns, if you didn't see it. Pew, 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 pew. All right, we're definitely on the road to 16 wins now. Woo, nice. That's our second win of the season on a top 10 team. So while I was starting to think that this might not even be a CBI, CTI kind of team, uh, if they can pull off a couple more wins, we might, might, might be able to uh, sneak into the NIT. Now, I wouldn't want to do Utah either. They, Utah does nothing for me. The Cardinals and the Fighting Irish in the Edmund P. Joyce Center. This was one of the games that I called winnable, but uh, mm, I, I think we'll get smoked. Like, we've won too many in a row. We're due for a stinker. 
And we didn't get smoked, but we lost by nine. All right, so not a surprise there. Not a surprise there, but we're 14 and 13. Six and 10 in the conference, four games left. We only need one to feel decent about the season. If we could grab two, maybe we could sneak into the NIT. Or at least some some type of postseason tournament. We would need to win two and do like get a win or two in the ACC tournament. Your best player is Colin Sexton. It it oh it it just it, with the Jazz. Don't you have uh, Donovan Mitchell and the big man, Jokic? Pitt coming in to Louisville. This is very winnable. It's very losable, but it's very winnable. We could do it. We could do it, baby. Hey, guys, if you're in here and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you're smashing on those buttons. Uh, we hit 100 subscribers. If you didn't see that uh, announcement at the beginning of the stream, we're at 100 followers on uh, Twitch. Uh, but make sure you you know subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, whatever it is that you do, to make sure you're getting notifications because you want to see us hang a banner here with Louisville before we hang up the Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2021 uh, 2020 game. Uh, you know. You can see I'm already excited for 2021. That's what I'm uh, looking forward to. When when 2021 drops, uh, 2020 will be put on the shelf. But if you want to catch us as we run through the end of 2020, make sure smash on those buttons. Yeah, the Cardinals take down Pittsburgh by 18. Leon Baker actually showed up. You know, when the guy shows up, he's all right. He's just so inconsistent and weird. Yeah, Lord Clamwell, if you haven't seen, uh, was it the real G-Wood that did the, uh, like, reclaim a ring for Stockton and Malone? Check out the GM Games Discord or the YouTube or something, because there is a remake of uh, Stockton and Malone with the Jazz. So if you're into that, like, time period and into seeing those guys win a ring, uh, it's it's definitely been done on GM Games uh, on the YouTube. Yeah, just just search GM Games on YouTube and you'll see the little deal and you can check it out. Like I said, I, I think it's real G-Wood. Oh, it's Coach Fury that did that. Okay. See, Chris is all over it. So guys, I called 15 wins, but here we sit with three games left. We're already on 15. So anything else from here on out is just icing on the cake. So Don, you let Donovan go. You couldn't re-sign him. And then you let Jokic go for a second rounder. I understand if Mitchell leaves. Like if you can't convince a guy to sign, you can't do anything about it. But I am surprised you would let Jokic go for a second rounder. Seems like he's worth more than that. But, you know, your mileage may vary. You never know how a guy plays in a given save. Cardinals and the Yellow Jackets at Georgia Tech might be a heavy lift for the Cardinals to try to pick up win number 16 here. And they can't do it. They fall by nine. David Williams, Jason Alexander, and I missed the third player. It might have been Cleveland. 15 and 14 with two games to go in the regular season. Yeah, that's fair. I don't I guess I don't know exactly how old Jokic is. Or shit, if you're in the 2025-26 season, you know, he's definitely getting older. But then it's a real shame. I was uh how did Mitchell progress? Was was he just I guess where was he? Louisville and the Boston College. 
So we might hit win 16 here. I might have underestimated how we were going to finish off this run. Oof. Yeah, sounds like you made the right move then, I guess. The Eagles of Boston College, the Cardinals of Louisville, facing off in the ACC. And the Cardinals bring a home on the backs of two freshmen and a sophomore. God, I got no idea what these senior guards are doing. But these young guys bringing us back from the brink. At one point, I think we were like 2-9 and nine in the ACC, and we're closing in on 500 conference play. I mean, we're not going to make it. But we've got the worst team in the conference, Miami, at their place. So this is about as 50-50 as it gets. Oh, you're going back to 70s and 80s. I don't know if I can even get back that far. I mean, I can definitely do some 80s. You want to go like uh, college basketball 80s, I can get you. Dr. Duncan Stein with Louisville. Old Daryl Griffith. All right, Louisville headed to Miami. See if we can get to 9 and 11 in conference play we would need. We haven't really won on the road, but this is about the best opportunity we'll have. And we can't do it. Freshman, sophomore, senior. Ross finally did, you know, got some points, but can Baker, again, nowhere to be found. He's no Corey Gray is all I'm saying. Leon Baker is no Corey Gray. God bless. All right, so I called 15 wins. We ended up hitting 16. We got one game better than expected, and that's pretty much just Clemson, as far as I can see. All right, folks, we're going for uh, maybe not a marathon, like maybe not a five-hour stream, but we're going for a long one tonight. The uh, problem with going for a long stream is I gotta run up and take breaks every now and then. So, two minutes, I'll be right back. And we'll get the ACC tournament. All right, tournament time, baby. No, nobody's coming in and taking my beers. I'll put a I'll put a cipher lock on the door up there before I let that happen. The big thing is my wife's not up there stamping around demanding that I run up or whatever it is. Uh, all the super passive aggressive stuff that usually happens. I got no pressure tonight. Uh, the only thing I want to do. Uh, I'm introducing my son to Star Wars, so uh, we watched Luke blow up the Death Star last night, 
and tonight we are going to see the Empire strike back at some point. He's into, like, I'm showing him Star Wars and Indiana Jones, so. Just depends on which one he wants to see. All right, Notre Dame and Louisville on a neutral court. I think a win here might get us to the NIT. Let's see what we get. This is a loss. Mm -hmm. We beat Clemson at home. Shocked Clemson. Uh, they're going to get their payback right here. Boom. Oh! <laughs> Leon Baker showed up again. Every time the guy shows up, we pull off a shocker. He doesn't show up often. He, he's a bit of a bust. But you know, when he decides he wants to play some round ball, uh, we do stuff like that. So 18 and 15, we're definitely in the NIT now. So now we got a shot at the Dukies. Who looks like Florida State on the other end of this tournament. Louisville and Duke on a neutral court. And yeah, we bring it back to earth. <laughs> Don't get too excited. Our team's terrible. But we did get to 18 wins. Uh, 16 in the regular season and then 2 in the ACC. So I'm thinking we can make the NIT. We'll see who won there. It was Florida State and Duke. And I did not catch who won. Uh, Duke. Duke wins the ACC tournament in 2040. So now it's time for the, the selection show. Guys, I've got the audio output fixed, I think. But if you're worried about it, make sure you turn your volume down right now. We don't need any popped eardrums or anything. Let me scroll through my email real quick. Oh, declaring for the draft. Uh, we shouldn't have anything. We don't. Delhi made the Norton finalist. That's cool. Love to see it for Ben Delhi. See how the selection show goes. So we're very much not an NCAA tournament team. We didn't even finish 500 in conference. Is this still loud, Lord Clamel? Because I can turn it down. Like I can fix that on my own. Kansas City, Arkansas. They're Southern, so we can't feel that bad about the loss to Southern. They made the NCAA a play-in game, but still. So Michigan State grabs the one in Pittsburgh. Florida State a two. Syracuse a three. The Providence Friars with the four. Kentucky fell all the way to a six, so that win is not as good as it looked early in the year. Auburn with the one. No surprise there. The Sooners, the Spiders, and Kent State round out the top four seeds in the Detroit region. Villanova, Duke, Cincinnati, and Kansas State in Tampa. Oregon, Clemson, North Carolina. There's my Florida A&M Rattlers. 23 and 9. Grab a 14 seed to play the UNC Tar Heels. And Oklahoma State gets the 4 against Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, I always warn now just cuz I've heard too many times how bad it was, but um I've I've changed my output level, so hopefully that helps. Maryland only had nine wins on the season. Are you for real? Did they make a tournament with nine wins? Or did you see that in like a, a different show? So we're in the CBI. Oh, I really thought we should be in the NIT. All right. Uh, one thing we do need to check out, because this point guard still hasn't committed. But we're not even in his top 10? Okay. We need to see when do these in-home visits start. Because that's 
Uh, much more important than whatever games we got going on here. March 19th. Okay, so next week. Uh, let's go take a look. Let's take a look at the standings. See what the see what's going on over here in the Big Ten. Yeah. I mean, Maryland's 19 and 13 on the year. Yeah, you're seeing something. Random task. It is a Friday night. Have you started drinking yet? Or otherwise partaking? They're 19 and 11. So we should have some winnable games here, though. Let's see if we can make a little noise in this postseason tournament. You know, uh, give these guys a couple of senior guards. They might not have been the best, but uh, give them a little something to go out on. And then we're going to burn it up right into next season and see what our players start doing. I mean, you've already seen it. You've seen what we're doing what we did at Auburn, what we did at Tulane, over and over. We're going to do it here as well. We already brought in the class. Uh, just a matter of time. But let's have a little bit of fun here while we're uh, playing down in the dregs of the NCAA with the CBI tournament. The SIU Edwardsville, uh, uh, a Panther or something, a Cougar. I don't know. We need to beat them. And we do. Almost 20. Nice. <clears throat> so folks we're, we're one went away from 20 on the season they said 15 i said i got that and now we're gonna hit could we hit 20 could we do it is that maybe it's just me because i got kids i said can we do it and then i'm like bob the builder yes we can oh my goodness uh, yeah, I skipped right over Nebraska because they fired me. We had them ready to go. I mean, we had their point guard set up. We had we had them building in the right direction, but they cut us off after three years and then immediately went back to crap. So, of course, they're a dumpster fire. That's why Tulane's still doing better than they are. No patience. No patience. And I was having so much fun shucking corn out there. I don't get it. The Old Dominion Monarchs and the Louisville Cardinals. This should be a barn burner. This one should be extremely close. We need, if we want to move on, we need those senior guards to do something. If we win, you'll see Baker or Ross in that top three. There he was. Leon Baker showed up. Uh, ooh, Alexander only 15 minutes. I don't guess he got hurt. Must have been first half foul trouble, I guess. Uh, but Leon Baker, 14 points and 14 assists. That's the kind of game we needed out of him. That's exactly what we needed. And Ross chipped in with 16, went 4 of 10 from 3. Chris Wright, the freshman, 6 of 12 from 3. 24 points, 6 rebounds. Uh, that's how you go about winning a tournament game, guys. That's how you do it. All right, so 20 wins in our first season here at Louisville. Uh, I doubt, you know, especially with the if had we not cut players, uh, I still think we would have lost some prestige. But uh, you know, the more we win here in the postseason, look at Auburn doing things and stuff. Delhi Leach and Holmes. That's on a Saturday, so that was the that was the Sweet Sixteen. When we get through, wait, Thursday, Friday. no, 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 that was the Elite Eight. They made the Final Four. This is the other Elite Eight games today. All right, so now Louisville gets Marquette. Let's play this here. Let's play out our next game or two if we make another game. And then we're going to go check out the NCAA tournament for this year. So the Marquette Golden Eagles and the Louisville Cardinals, great conference USA rivals. Uh, what are they going to be like in 2040? Let's find out. Oh, 96. Oh, oh, 
My word. My word. Up to 21 wins. Now we got the Marshall Thundering Herd. Are we the only game today? This is the only game today. Louisville and Marshall, and my guess is this is probably the CBI championship. Won it by 40. Oh, my. Talk about coming on strong at the end of the year. Let's go check the CBI tournament and see if I just won that, because I'm honestly not sure. I have no idea like how many games are in that. We're up to 22, 23 wins on the year, right? Seniors went out on a high note. Yeah, a 40-point win. Assuming that was a championship game, that's not too shabby. Yeah, that's all she wrote, right? Finals? 40-point win in the finals. So, Louisville, your CBI ch Hang a banner, baby! <laughs> uh, that banner goes nowhere near the Yum Center. But, we won. I mean, it's better than losing. All right, let's check out the NCAA. In Pittsburgh, Michigan State, the one seed, took it all the way. West Virginia slid in there, uh, but couldn't take out the Spartans. Arkansas actually upset Florida State. UConn upset Syracuse, and then Arkansas moves on, but nobody's getting past Sparty in Pittsburgh. In Detroit, the Auburn Tigers. Ben Deli, the one seed. Once again, it's chalk over here. It's the one beats the four. The two beat the 11 Memphis Tigers, who did upset the Richmond Spiders. But it's Auburn Tigers in Detroit. In Tampa, Villanova comes out. Minnesota Golden Gophers take them down, but then they fall to the Stanford Cardinal. And Stanford knocks off UC to move on to the Final Four. And your last Final Four team in the Boise region, the Oregon Ducks. I mean, that's that's one, two, three, four. Uh, North Carolina did manage to upset Clemson here in the 2-3 matchup in the Elite Eight. But Oregon moves on. So your finals are one seed, one seed, one seed. And Stanford sneaks in with the five. So it's going to be really exciting here to see if Auburn, now that I'm gone, uh, can you know just take all that talent I recruited and make up for my lack of coaching knowledge and, and hang a banner. Oh, I think, was that 76-78? Did they lose that? Or was it 76-74 win? I think they had 76. Auburn, baby. Oh, 76-68. So I said nobody could take down Sparty. I forgot to mention my Auburn Tigers could take down Sparty. And now here they go against the Oregon Ducks, which this is an interesting rematch because we played Oregon last year. I think they beat us at home, if I'm not mistaken. So a huge, huge rematch here between the Auburn Tigers and the Oregon Ducks. I built this Auburn team. This would be the second team that I built to win a national championship in this save after I left. We'll see if they can pull it off, guys. Oh, no, they can't. The Oregon Ducks take them out. What a shame. Can we get a box score here? So, Delhi did his 13-12 and 12 thing. Perry Leach scored 11. Logan chipped in another double-double, but Cheryl was nowhere to be seen. Went one for eight from three-point range. You're a power forward. What are you doing? And Holmes, the freshman point guard, only played 17 minutes. I can only assume that's some early foul trouble. Uh, Quarles came in, scored a little bit. Uh, just not much off the bench here. Uh, could not take down the Ducks. So... Uh, it, and it was all in the first half. So, yeah, that's definitely some early foul trouble on Holmes. Put Auburn behind the eight ball. And they fell to the Oregon Ducks. So, it's a shame. Uh, we built a hell of a team there with the Auburn Tigers. But uh, couldn't get it done. Coach Scott would have got them there. Let's check out the awards on the season, guys. And then let's get into this next season. Let's get some <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, always leaving a legacy behind. Tulane's still doing big things. Nebraska are the only losers in this save. All right, so here are the individual awards. Look at Coach of the Year. Oh! I'd like to say curse words right now. <laughs> like, like the worst ones. This loser coming in on my coattails taking Coach of the Year in the nation? Are you kidding me? What a joke. Absolute joke. Stole my award, Jimmy Allen. Get out of here, boy. Give me a break. First team All-Americans. Uh, nothing too awfully exciting there. Sherman Goodwin. Did we go after him? Why is his name familiar? Second team All-Americans. Ben Deli, baby. Ben Deli. A second team All-American with Auburn. I didn't get snubbed. I got robbed. That dude took over my job and just like... Stupid. All right, congrats to him. I mean, he made the national championship game, but... Uh, that's like Tubby Smith climbing on Rick Patino's back. You know what I mean? Look at Tony Lieb from Syracuse. So, and here we go. Second team all conference. Chris Ross and David Williams, a sophomore, popped up in there. Guys, I'm very interested to see what happened in the SEC with my guys. Check out the individual awards. Of course, this loser steals my Coach of the Year award again. But first team all conference, there's Ben Deli. And in the second team, Justin Logan is a second team all conference performer. So, uh, the Auburn Tigers obviously holding it down. We brought in some really talented players down there. My best record at Auburn. Let's go check. <laughs> People's coach. I'm definitely level 10 discipline. I feel like that helps you get some recruits here and there, like occasionally, but... Uh, Let's go check out my best record at Auburn. I had a couple of good years there. You know, random tasks, you could always go back and watch the streams. If you were subscribed, you'd be catching them live. You'd know. Just messing with you. Uh, let's scroll down to the SEC. Auburn Tigers, school history. No, wait, do we want history? Not school history. Yeah, it didn't get me the award. I got snubbed. I keep moving. Like, if you keep moving, you're going to keep getting snubbed. That, Whatever that happens. Uh, all right, so no, he got a better record than me. The best I went was 32-6. and six. He made the finals. My 32-16 and 16 made the Elite Eight. My 32-17 and 17 made the Final Four. So, yeah, he was slightly better. Whatever. Get out of here. I'm buying that crap. Jimmy Allen. We'll see how he does in a couple... Of oh, shoot. That was my recruiter. Here's Thomas Sawyer, the point guard. And he went to Michigan State. I forgot to visit him. I went and made sure to see the date. And then forgot. And we lost him. Oh, well, it happens. <laughs> failed and horribly at that <laughs> oh we maintain school prestige 78 to 79 and that was with cutting two players I guess the CBI tournament does big things so we still have 100% job security I think yeah so we do need to win 20 games this year but otherwise pretty much the same thing and, I mean, our team's going to be better this year. That's just a no-brainer. <sighs> See who wants us as the head coach. Everybody. Arizona. Auburn. <laughs> <laughs> Auburn just went to the national championship game. Their coach won coach of the year. And they'd love to have us back. <laughs> That's got to tell you something, guys. That's got to tell you something. 
We can go coach the Dukies. Florida's on probation. Ha! <laughs> Indiana's on probation. Ha 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 ha. Penn State on probation. UT on probation. A lot of good jobs out there. Nothing better than the Ville, baby. Breeze right on past that. Yeah, their coach probably left. I am kind of interested in where he ended up, though. double check I'm like 95% certain oh that was our second coach I don't know why I thought that was the first assistant but it was our second coach so we need a practice coach and we've got so much money to bring him in look at that dude with the offensive coaching wow I think I'm going to go right here. Oh, hold on. Let's make sure he's he's not interested. Oh, hold on. No, he's not interested in a second coaching job. Uh, all right, so really good player development there. It drops off significantly if I want to grab a guy that's a little bit more even on the offensive defensive swing. Let's just grab Fuller. He wants 70K. Yeah, we can do that. Three years. Coming to the ACC. Alan came in cruise to a coach of the year. Yeah, that's exactly what he did. Like, you talk about me bailing on, bailing on teams. I was at Auburn for five years. That loser was there for one. What a jerk. Yeah, the budget at this school is ridiculous. Because it starts off at like 450 and now it's like 575 It's crazy. We're going to go find him, Chris. Don't you worry. Let me get past this. Uh, finish in advance. <clears throat> I would have much rather a recruiter been uh, the one to retire there because I would have liked to have just spent like $150,000 on a recruiter or something. But, uh, you know, if the right guy's not available, it's no use wasting money, I don't guess. This is the only players? I want coaches. Where's he at? Hold on. I don't know how to find him. He retired. Look at this. He was at Army for 20 years. Absolute crap coach. Went to Baylor for one year. Came in here, rode my coattails to glory, and retired. I mean, you go out on top, I guess. That's one way to do it. What a joke. Stole my award. <sighs> yeah, he only had a 586 record. I got 598, and he was at one school for 20-something years. If I was at one school for 20-something years, I'd be winning 75% of my games easy. What a joke. Jimmy Allen, you loser. 
It's not funny. It's, it's heartbreaking. He showed up for one year, took him to the national championship game, then retired, and now my boy's like, all the guys that I recruited to Auburn, they got to play for their third coach in three years? That, that's screwed up. Jimmy Allen, you're a jerk. Let's see if we can improve facilities again. Our facilities are garbage. Yeah, I mean, Army's a respectable gig, but Jesus, if you're there for 20 years, maybe you ought to win more than 58% of your games. All right, so we got denied on the um, increase to facilities. We got it approved last year, though. The facilities were all the way down to like a C plus or something, so we're back up to a B. Uh, once we get prestige back up over 80, maybe around 85, hopefully they'll ease off on that a little bit, jump it back up. Cause I, I need like a A, A plus facilities, uh, in the Southeast, we're really in a recruiting battle with Florida and Kentucky, especially Florida, just because of the coach that they have. Uh, he's so good. Uh, the coach that takes over Florida at the beginning of the game is super good and super young and he's there forever. So Ford is always really strong. Let's see what kind of recruiting class Jimmy Allen brought in. Anybody in chat willing to bet that he beat me out on recruiting? Because I'm going to guess no. Even though we just lost that guy to Michigan State. Should be fairly easily. Uh, top five recruiting class that we just pulled in and now we're going to go do it again so uh i'm pretty sure that when chris did the graphic for this uh it just says reload and that's exactly what we're about to do i guess the first season was technically a load <laughs> but uh now we got at least six players that are very very solid so we're gonna be moving up rather quickly and uh guys it's only quarter after seven so we got time don't need that don't need that no nope. two scholarships we can cut players to add at least one more number three number three recruiting class in the very first year and michigan state's just barely ahead of us had we grabbed that out of the point guard we'd probably be number two uh, Auburn checking in at number 14. So, uh, Jimmy Allen. Like, um, that's so frustrating. I hate that. Look at this, folks. Here are our freshmen. Cherry, the point guard, already four and a half stars. Uh, and that's a legit four and a half stars. It's not some bullshit like... Uh, Baker's four, Leon Baker's four and a half stars. Cherry will be very legit. Shannon, the shooting guard, at three stars. He'll be all right as a second guard. We really need one more. Um, that's why I was really hoping to bring in the guy that went to Michigan State. Chris Wright, obviously, solid player. Uh, Jackson's okay. Alexander didn't improve much. Actually, might have slid backwards. But Brandon Tyler... Five stars right out of the gate. I don't know what else you can do. Oh, you're way past midnight. Where are you at, Lord Clamel? What country are you in? All right, so we got two guards, one small forward, and we actually have three or four big men that I'm all right with. So we really need to focus down here. But all these guys are scholarship players. We'll probably get a couple of walk-ons to fill in here. Uh, God, all these guys are scholarship players. That's so, so embarrassing. Uh, 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 uh. Chris, uh, Terrence Stapleton, rather, is no longer a Louisville Cardinal. Look, he's, he's a red shirt junior, and he's a one-and-a-half star player. Dude, you're terrible. You got no business being in D1 basketball. Get out. I mean, Dearborn, McPherson. 
and probably Avery could also join him if I really felt the need. But we got three scholarships as of right now. Let's see if we can grab a guard and another small forward. And then the best player available after that. Ooh, Sweden. All right, so, <clears throat> I told you guys last time I just went all out buying reports. And this is exactly what I did. I'm going to do it again. Because like $360,000 is just stupid. I need a way more expensive coaching staff and I just can't get better coaches. Like I'm paying guys as much as I can and that I just, I don't know. I need much better coaches. All right. Nobody transferred out. So, I mean, I think I can take a look at transfers I usually absolutely hate this. No good ratings on anybody. No interest on anybody. So there's the top score. Mm But we've already got a really, really good freshman center. I mean, he could come in and be a backup. But, see, this is the thing. I'd rather have... I'd rather bring in a freshman center to be the backup rather than this junior. Would the junior be a little bit better? Yeah, but we don't get him for a season or two. Like, no. The transfers just do nothing for me. I don't know. Top 10 wish list is about all I'm getting. It gives you gold reports, and they're supposed to be slightly more accurate, but to be quite honest, I never even look at them because I have so much more faith in the camp reports. So I, I only did that to spend the money. Uh, I've got more money than I know what to do with right now, which is why I need to be spending it on coaches. Uh... The, you just can't spend that much money on recruiting. You can't. I mean, at the most, at the most, you need, and this is like luxury recruiting, $80,000 on the National Gold Report, 30000 for your region's gold report is one ten, and then 10, 20, Call it thirty thousand for the rest, one hundred and forty thousand on reports, and then another twenty-five. I mean, one hundred and seventy-five thousand gets you all the reports, all of the uh, camp visits, and then uh, call it seventy-five. So two hundred fifty thousand total gets you all the reports, all the visits. And all the money you need. Uh, having three hundred seventy-five thousand is just one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars that I just need to light on fire somewhere. You can see those rankings changed a little bit. Shannon bumped up. I think Wright slid up. Jackson definitely did. So now it even clarifies a little bit more. Like, here's our two guards for sure. And our third guard that we really wanted went to Michigan State. Here's our small forward. And then Tyler, Williams, and Alexander are our three big men. So we got three big men. We're good on the inside. And Jackson is even adds a little bit more depth. I'm interested to see if he can slide down to play the three. Uh, because we're, we're lacking depth at guard. Walk-ons gave us nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Visit, visiting the camps is way, way more important than gold reports. I could definitely do recruiting. I mean, to be honest, even with a, even with the best schools in the country, all you need, all that you need, if you have the best school in the country, is the basic national report. Uh, attend Indy and attend 
I don't know, three or four of the regional camps. So you can do that on 10, 15, 20 to 25,000, and then give yourself a generous 50,000 to actually bring people in. So on $75,000, you should be able to recruit at any school. Uh, so, you, so like if I got five seventy five at Louisville, I could easily, easily spend five hundred thousand on assistance, and still be just fine recruiting. Yeah, Bob. Um, about an hour. Yep. You want to come down here and be on it? Huh? No. My assistant coach doesn't want to appear on stream. Yeah, visiting camps is far more important. Once once you're recruiting nationally, I would definitely advise you to go to the indie camp and then go to all the regional camps. And you can do that for what? Twenty five, thirty thousand. Yeah, dude. I think you can watch that on your iPad. Let's check out the twenty forty pro draft here. Oh, UK had the uh, number one draft pick in Louis Armstrong. All right, let's see if Baker or Ross got drafted. I could, like I said, oh, look, Leon Baker went 22nd. Now, get the, get out of here. Leon Baker went 22nd. He was useless, complete turd. Corey Gray at Auburn went 20th overall. That's unforgivable, unforgivable. No way that makes any sense. Leon Baker was trash. There's Chris Ross going 37th. D. Henry. Oh, wait. Where did um, Deli go? Wait a minute. D. Henry's the top Auburn player to get selected. Ben Deli went after him? There's no way! What is wrong? Oh, my God. What is wrong with this? How's Delhi go behind D. Henry? D. Henry was like a project small forward. Oh, my God. I'm not satisfied with the results of the 2040 draft. But you know what? Here's the thing. I don't ever like to blame the game. I like to get like up in my head and imagine how this works out. Like These are some bad bad talent evaluators in the NBA like these are some knuckleheads uh drafting uh you know these these goobers at number one overall that never even play a game you know thinking Greg Oden is better than Kevin Durant that's how this is working out so all these people are Greg Oden and way down here at number 43 is Kevin Durant that's how I rationalize that so take that however you like it all right, let's get our recruiting in, folks. We ought to have what, three scholarships now. We had two. I cut another player. We ought to have three. It's on June 26th. Uh, we definitely need guards, and we could use another uh, swingman. So let's get it started. Yeah, we can go all regions, point guard, full list. And we'll add it up as we usually do. Like I said, I, I mean, I'm never going to... Oh, look at that. The number one point guard whoo, in the Southeast region. Love to see it. Love to see it. There's one. Uh, yeah, we're going to add these guys. Two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to skip right over that 2.2. What's up, buddy? Have you turned the PlayStation on? Did you turn the PlayStation on? I don't know. Grab the controller and hit the middle button. Oh, this one? Okay. 
six, seven. Yep. All right, got the guards loaded up. Let's get some small forwards over here. Three scar ships, and keep in mind, we can always cut somebody. Um, what are you trying to turn on? Yeah, just go down to TV video and then click on Netflix. Just look at the TV and see which one says TV. TV? We'll see how this works out. I might have to run up and turn this on for him real quick. And that would probably buy me like two extra hours. We'll power forward action. One, two, three. He's interested. He's not. He's not. He is. Remove the Chinese guy. Uh, just because I won't get camp information on him. <laughs> yeah, it always really sucks when you take a flyer on an international player and then they don't make the SAT. So hard. But the thing is, if you'll see what I'm doing here, and I've been talking about this for a long time. So when I come through my list, like, anybody with a real solid SA, uh, GPA, like a 3-2, I'm going to take them no problem. The rest of it, I'm going to base off their interest. So as I come down through here, 3.0, I'll take him. A 2-4 with no interest, I'm not going to take him. I'm telling you, I have never, I've played this game for hundreds of hours now. Anybody that has interest, whether it's cool or warm, I have never, ever, ever seen them fail to qualify. If they have a interest before you start recruiting them so like this 2-4 right here with cool interest he'll qualify 100 this guy with a 2-4 and no interest i won't touch him with a 10-foot pole no possible way so that's what uh that's how i sort it out And if you ever, ever find an exception to that rule, please let me know. I ask for it in every stream. Nobody's ever been able to tell me that I'm wrong yet. So I'm pretty sure it's a hard and fast rule. It's actually my number one suggestion of things to change uh, for, for the new version of the game. Get some hosting, get some film. That, and uh, I want to see players who are outside the top 25 who have great seasons. I'd like to see them uh, declare for the draft more often. Yes, James? The X button. All right, guys, I got to go turn on Netflix for him. Got all our calls, we got all our film, we got all our hosting. Let's advance. I'll run up, get Netflix situated for him, grab another drink, and then be back. We're going to get through all of this recruiting, and we're going to see how this season goes as well. I don't know if we'll get the full season in, but I'm going to do my best. Be right back. Enjoy. Talk amongst yourselves.
All right. Here we go, baby. Got Netflix on. The kids entertained. The dogs are upstairs. Let's see if we can blow through an entire season of recruiting and ball games. Um, see how these initial campus visits went. Enjoyed it. Appreciated it. Enjoyed it. All right, nothing crazy. Let's get our national camps going. So Mike Kersey from Georgia. Georgia. So we had a quite a few of our most of our players, I guess, war at Indy. Power forward from South Carolina, the MVP at East Coast. All right, we're not going to even look at Georgia. We're not worried about that. Let's get this Western camp out of the way and then jump in to our recruiting again. Oh, we had a handful here. Zach Thomas got the MVP. All right, let's take a look at who's on our list. Host some of the top guys. Uh, Hayes, we probably don't have any information on. Let's dial him up. What's up, Kareem? Oh, did not get facilities. There we go. All right, and then we probably need to finish off Wait, did we miss one, or did somebody switch places? Darting. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, the guy that was in second had no interest in us the first week, so we skipped over him. So now we finish off the number three player. All right, so now we got three that are totally unlocked, and, oh, we can scout live. Let's just... Drop it right up here. We need a guard. We need a forward. We need a guard. Get a little bit of film. Look at all these A evaluations. Golly. Maybe our scout's just really generous, you think? Uh, either we're targeting the right guys or our scout is super generous. I have no idea which it is, but uh, looks like so far a lot of good options here for our three scholarships in 20. 40. See how these visits went. Looks like everybody still got a lot of interest. Appreciated it. Enjoyed it. Cool visit. I mean, I feel like I'm a cool guy. It ought to be a cool visit. It's a cool school. Get the Houston out of the way. Get Chicago out of the way. Get our hosting. Oh, got to reselect. Cool, cool. Get a host. Some more live visits. Kersey is, I think, at the top of the list. Hayes has got to be close. Jovan Bannon. What are you interested in, man? What does it for you? Tell me what to pitch you when we come in. Julius Gamble out of Louisiana. We got to now see, this is where it, it kind of screws us because, like, we built up Tulane. Now that Tulane's in state, and now they got a legit chance at a guy like this. So it's where our, our own success comes back to bite us in the ass. Uh, hopefully, there's not many good players in Alabama. Because Auburn will surely take them from us. Yeah, it's a nice feeling. The kid's got the TV. Uh, he's watching some Goosebumps. So, I know that's one of those things I was into when I was a kid. So, I can see why he's probably into it. Uh, the dogs are up there with him, and the door is shut, so they won't be down here chewing up my bongos anymore. 
And yeah, my wife's out of town till Sunday, I guess. I don't know. She didn't really tell me when she's coming back. I didn't ask. Um, so that's where we're at. <laughs> and that's why I think like we can make a decent... I don't know. I don't want to promise that I can get through this season. Uh, but you know, I'm going to go for a while. I'm going to go for a while, see how far I can get. I just want to see the Louisville team take off. You know what I mean? I mean, I'd, I'd love to hang banners and stuff, but I don't think it's going to happen yet. We're not we're not really there. Uh, but I'd love to make some progress. Weiss, I believe he did really good at a camp. <laughs> no, I don't need a cam. Uh, he's he's like seven, so like, he can take care of himself. If he's having trouble, he'll come down here and yell at me. So, like, as long as he's not down here yelling at me, I know everything's all right. He's good to go. Dead period. Oh. Oh, shoot, we're already out of time. That was a dead period. My bad. Yeah, Lord Clamwell, you know, if you're in Sweden, buddy, and you're up at, like, two... 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh, totally understand that you need to check out at this point. Glad to have you. So glad to uh, bring y'all streams when some other people around the world can get in. Uh, but yeah, catch the rest of it on YouTube. It'll be good stuff. I mean, look at this class we're lining up. It's just all the top 25 players. You know what I mean? Uh, it's going to happen fast here at Louisville. Guarantee you that. All right, we got some more live scouting there, there, and there. Ooh, we need some calls. How far down are we on this list with phone calls? Robinson. God, 145 a.m. Man, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate the, the kind words about the stream. Um, I mean, I'm not... I would have been doing this anyway if I didn't have a camera and a microphone. I would have been sitting here doing this tonight either way. So really the only difference is that I try to think of things to say <laughs> as I play and get a little bit of reaction, which is cool to share it with people. Uh, but man, this is... This is so much fun, and you guys really make it uh, what it is. Y'all take it to a whole nother level. Uh, I'm not doing much here that I wouldn't have been doing anyway. So uh, thank you guys. If it's a good stream, it's because of you guys for sure. So let's get through these last couple of camps. Only a handful of our guys went to Michigan. That's interesting. Weiss went. I'm calling it right now Weiss's MVP. It's almost like I've played this game before. Almost. Where's he at? <laughs> Look at him. Such a beast. David Weiss. Why was I so high on him? Did he do good at East Coast? He must not have been at Indy, right? Is that why his name was on my mind? Cursey, obviously. Yeah, he was MVP at East Coast Champ. All right. We got a couple of players here, guys. Uh, Mike Kersey was the MVP at uh, Indy. He's in the Southeast region. He's the number one overall prospect. We desperately need guards. I mean, we're, we're on his list. So that's an offer. 
Uh, David Weiss, also an offer. So that's a power forward, that's a guard, and now we need to look at small forward. Let's look here through our region first. I would really like it to be a small forward. Oh, Galia, get out of here. Now, <laughs> now we get the scrub showing up two hours into the stream. Agalia is here. Yay. Let's see how these Southeast players are looking. If a Tremendous work ethic. Love to see that. Uh, not so great at the camps, though. D'Antonio White out of Kentucky. Uh, top 25 at Indy. And top 10 at Memphis. So there is our small forward offer. 1,000%. We need to unlock his pitch areas next week. Oh, we still got a camp to go? Is this America East? Uh, Aguilia, yeah, you missed it, buddy. Uh, you know, in the last stream, I took Auburn to the final, the Elite Eight, or the final four, and got bounced. Took the job at Louisville. Uh, last season... The new Auburn coach came in, took them all the way to the championship game, lost, but then won coach of the year on my coattails, and then promptly retired. So, it's been one of those kind of streams. Although we did, Louisville had a terrible season last year. Well, not terrible. We were like 20, 21 wins, 22 wins. Uh, but we did beat some losers called the Kentucky Crap Cats, number three in the nation. Uh, took care of them, so... No, we're in 2040, bro. It's like the 22nd season or something of this stream. Yeah, it's going to be a good year for me in NCBA as well. Uh, this is the first year in a long time, it, like three years, that I've actually had the reports. And it kind of feels like cheating. So I'm going to show all of y'all how it's done this year. Because the thing is, my entire team right now is all built off of players that I recruited in the first year when I did have reports. And I stole them all in like March. <laughs> yeah, I didn't plan on leaving Auburn. But then, like, um, honestly, the, the main reason that I left is because uh, I feel like we're getting toward the end of this stream because I think that college basketball 2021 will probably come out soon. And I figured like a a uh, journeyman save like 22, 21, 22 years in where I finally get to Louisville, which is obviously my favorite program. Uh, I felt like that was a good end for it. So if, if this were like four months ago and college basketball 2021 was nowhere close, I would have stayed at Auburn and just ran through things and made Kentucky an afterthought. But uh, given the circumstances, I thought this would be an interesting finish to see if I could take Louisville to that next level quick and in a hurry. <laughs> Excuse me. Before we get to college basketball 2021. He's all about location. But, oh, God. Kentucky's in his list. Oh, God. <sighs> yeah, it was... I didn't want to do Louisville. It's not... It, it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. It just... It made sense for the story. Made sense for the story. Chris taught me into it. A bunch of people taught me into it. Don't ask any questions. Quit being a fly on the ointment here. What am I even trying to do? Host recruits. We got our offers out. We've got those pitch areas unlocked on the three offers. We can scroll right on into September here. Definitely need to make sure we continue bringing in guards, though. 
because that's what we have to fill this year. Have to. After going like 22 wins in that first year with a garbage team, like I think this is going to take off really fast. Pretty excited about this. One more week. Here we go. First of all, let's hope we don't lose any of these guys in the first week, which we didn't. That's good. Uh, so we've still got... I guess I should go through these emails real quick. Uh... Cherry and Wright both nominated for the Norton. So Chris Wright, a sophomore. Alice Cherry, a freshman. Let's see how high up on this list they actually are. Probably not too high. Oh, Alice Cherry, 27th. Look at my boy from Auburn, Jamil Holmes. And then Chris Wright at 38. Do we have any more? Oh, Kurt Chambers from Auburn. Do we have any Auburn up higher that I missed? Yep, Justin Logan. So, the guys that I brought in are all over this list. Actually, I'm, I am going to go ahead and delete all emails here. Normally, I would save those, but with only three, three spots that we need to fill, I'm pretty confident that we can fill that out with what's already on our list. So, all regions, call watch list. Let's go all positions here. It's a contact period. First of all, Mike Kersey, the guard. Into school prestige. We're ninth on his list, but we are on normal, and um, our coach is at 100, so I'm not going to worry about it. Why? And Kersey, I don't have a great feeling about. Weiss, I actually do. School prestige, location. Let's go school prestige here. I think we can beat out both Georgia Tech and Syracuse on school prestige, I think. And our third offer on white. He's all about that location. Location, baby. Location, location, location. All right, cool. And as a backup, do we have a backup option? Uh, we don't need no stinking backups. Let's get some host, host, host. Let's just go for it. You brought in another strong recruiting class, though, right, Agelia? Oh, we lost two of them. Shit, we did need backups. No, we got one. Oh, Weiss went to Georgia Tech. We brought in White, lost out on Kersey. Also to Georgia Tech. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all play Among Us, but my sesometer's going off, and I get the feeling that Georgia Tech is doing that Justin uh, recruiting with the free Xboxes and whatnot. Alright, so we we grab the small forward. We still desperately, desperately need a guard. And then after that it's just best player available. He's top 25 at Indy. I mean, he's the best point guard in the nation. <clears throat> Let's not overthink it. He's the best point guard in the nation. Uh, this is the only other one in the southeast. Let's see if he's worth anything. Great leader. 
No problem with injury, but he didn't stand out of camp. So that's a no. All right, Curtis Q. Top 10 at Vegas. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Easily top 5 at Big Apple, top 25 at Indy. That's more like at Harrington. Hold on a second. All right. Sometimes I, I got to change the screen sometimes so I can actually see the offer, but we definitely did offer darting. Let's see. Cherry is probably going to stick around. Uh, let's check out these shooting guards. Just see what's out there. Todd Long. MVP at the Big Apple. Oh, yeah. What are you into, my man? He's in the school prestige. I know we can beat out Providence on that. Right? I think. Alright, so there's the one that we got in white. We lost out on Weiss to Georgia Tech, paying that money. Oh, look, though. All right, so we missed out on number two. Uh, number one's from Kentucky. How'd he look? Top five at Memphis. Top ten at Indy. Let's give the man a call. Give the man a call. What are you into? You into academics? You into discipline? Playing time? Facilities? Tell me about your parents. No scholarships left. We're still going to go talk about school prestige. And with the centers, I'm just looking for guys. Oh, well, yeah. Just looking to make some visits here. We can host a few. We got our small forward. We got a couple of other offers out. Dartling and Long. Couple of real good guards. Because I still feel... Oh, at Oklahoma. All right, so nothing crazy there. I still feel decent about our big men. Uh, our guards are lacking. Mm. Lost out on two of them again. And this time it's only two decisions. We lost out on long and darting. Hey, Daddy. What's up, buddy? Um, you know that I left on the top? Mm-hmm. Still there? All right, let's see where we're at on the list of the player who didn't check out on us. There's got to be one, right? Oh, no, no. We only had two offers out. So put it back under your pillow. We'll see what happens. Sorry, my kid's trying to figure out what the Tooth Fairy's doing. All right, let's just see what's left on our list. He was top five at Andy Elite. It's another small forward, but we can go for that. He wants playing time. We got playing time at the small forward position in spades, baby. I'd like to grab a guard. Hmm. All right, let's see if we can grab Harrington. Dial him up. Get some pitch areas opened up.
What do you want to hear about? You want to hear about uh, a Galio losing to a 16 seed? Does that do it for you? He wants to hear about coach discipline, actually. Okay. I was close. Let's give him discipline. Let's see if we can grab anybody else. Uh, maybe a backup option. Hmm. Bro, you can't lose to a 16 seed and not expect to hear about it every day. You just can't. Alright, John, what would you like to hear about? Talk about what you want to talk about, buddy. I mean, it's nice to bounce back with a completely undefeated season but <laughs> uh hard to get past losing to a 16 seed i the thing is the thing is here's here's where i'm coming from there have been what like 125 different teams that won the ncaa tournament somebody wins the ncaa tournament every year uh, there's only been like once that a one seed ever lost to a 16 in real life and also only once in the NCBA. So, uh, if you're talking about your more rare achievements, and I'll use that term lightly, uh, losing to a, losing to a 16 is the most interesting thing you've done. Oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. No, but everybody inherited a CPU team. None of them lost to a 16 seed, except for one. There, there, there was one. God damn, we lost another one. Went to Richmond. Why are we losing recruits to Richmond? All right. Well, that that was the other top small forward, and we've got a pretty good small forward. So we're up to fifth with Harrington. Let's talk a little conference prestige. No, thank you. Excuse me. Hard-working kid, top 25. This is our other offer. <clears throat> I really need these offers to go. Like, I have... Just like no effort in uh, doing any more recruiting. I want to see some games. But the good thing is this is the last week of it. So like we've got our starters lined up. We've got a really good recruit coming in. Hopefully at least one, if not both these guys recruit and we can move on. Uh, commit and we can move on. Come on. I know scholarships available. That's a 
good good sign yeah yo Corey Harrington Nate Garnett love to see it so let's take a look at that recruiting class came in late but it came in so two in the top 25 two five star guards along with a small forward so I would have liked to have brought in a really really highly ranked big man but we have really, really, really filled in positions of need here. Guard is so weak. Uh, small forward, we're only one deep. And we've got it surrounded here. So this class will completely even us out. We do still need a little bit more talent on the inside. Let's take a look at the dashboard here. Uh, Tyler is clearly a phenomenal player on the inside. Williams and Alexander also both good. So we've got a good three-man rotation. And then I well, I don't know, we got Jackson who's two and a half stars. I feel good about him. We might be there. Tyler, I, I'm trying to like go from is this a top 25 team? Is this a type of team that can move us forward to is this a championship team? Like Brandon Tyler is championship quality. Um, between these two, I think we have enough. I, I definitely think Chris Wright's championship quality. I definitely think Alice Cherry is championship quality. So really, we just need a talent infusion at the two, because I'm not sold on Joey Shannon. And then something else. And if you look here, we've got a five star in Nate Garnett. Hard working kid. Top five at the Big Apple. And decent at Indy. Garnett's going to be borderline that player that we need. Uh, Harrington may actually be end up being the other player that we need. But between the two of them, one of them ought to do it. Yeah, uh, our point guard's name is Alice Cherry, not Alex. Alice with an S. It might be Ailes, but I think it's I think it's Alice. Let me go ahead just guys because I've been streaming for two and a half hours now. Let me go ahead and save real quick. All right, folks. <clears throat> Once the save is through, our scholarships are done. It's time to get this depth chart right and get into... Is this the 2041 season? The 2040-2041 season. Holy crap. Guys... Thank you so much for being with me. I think this is like 23 seasons now. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, interesting decision in between Williams and Alexander as the starting power forward. Now, can we run Alexander? Yes. We can run Alexander as the backup power forward and center. Oh, but we, we got Alan Jackson back there. I don't know. The problem is, like, once we get, like, we have no backup guards. We have no backup small forward. The only help we have is Alexander uh, and Jackson. So we have nothing else. Adam Jackson is really an inside player. What I'm going to do is play him at small forward. I don't know if that will work or not. I mean, I know we have nothing at guard to back any of this up. So, pretty much everything we're doing at guard is garbage. Alright, so that gets Jackson eight minutes at the power forward spot. I don't know. We, have, we only have two guards. <laughs> we only have two guards. Uh, I mean, we'll have more guards next year, if that counts for anything. 
All right, but our starters are solid as could be. Uh, let's let's run it like this. I mean, I don't know what else to do. We got nothing. We got nobody that can dribble a basketball. We got help coming next year. We got a lot of help coming next year. But uh, this year, we, we really only have two guys that can do it. So let's just see what happens. I don't know what to say. Let me, let me bounce over and check out real quick. So we're still at 100% job security. If we fail, I mean, we've obviously already accomplished this. If we fail all the rest of these, worst, worst case scenario, we're at 70% job security. Then the rest of our guards get here and it's up, up and away. So we're good to go. It's just a matter of how this season goes. So I'm excited to see it. No, uh, none of my current freshmen are the type that are going to be one and done. So let's take a look at that. And that's actually one of those things that I kind of keep an eye on. Uh, Cherry should be the highest rated. He was, I want to say when I started recruiting him, he was outside of the top 25. Uh, he actually jumped up into it. So he is a danger to go. He could potentially go. But I've also had plenty of players right around the same ranking that were four-year players. So that's why uh, I did focus on making sure I brought in another point guard. So we've got a point guard coming in behind him if worse comes to worse. But Cherry was number 18. Uh, I have nobody that was in the top 10. Shannon was number 29. That's a four-star player. He's going to be a four-year player unless he transfers. Oh, oh. He's from Covington, Louisiana. I thought it was Covington, Kentucky. I live in Covington, Kentucky. Uh, Griffin's a walk-on. Adam Jackson, he's not necessarily starting, but you can see here he's 39th, so very much a four-year player. And then Brandon Tyler, who is probably the one that you really need to worry about, 22nd. So this is like B.B. Higgins Jr. We'll worry about him every year. He could go. Uh, and that would really hurt us because we're not bringing in anything on the inside. If Tyler happens to go, then next year we're looking at Williams, Alexander, and Jackson trying to fill in everything on the inside. Uh, but I, I have faith. <laughs> like 22nd, I, I've, I mean, you guys were with me. We've seen them stick around for four years. It could happen. It could happen. But we know we're fixing our guard situation. Uh, and, you know, worst case scenario, we'll fix the inside situation next year. But I think, I think we're all right. All right, so we're at like 60% for our strategy. Because we're starting one, two freshmen, a sophomore, another freshman, three freshmen. Who are we starting? Williams, a junior? Yeah, we're going to leave our strategy unchanged. Uh, I'm going to leave it exactly like it is. It was at 60% for last year. I'm going to do the same thing for this year. Agalia says Tyler looks like a beast. I'm going to grab myself a drink, and then we're going to take a look at the roster and figure out exactly what we feel. I agree based on this coming in. Anybody that comes in as a five-star rated freshman, I've got a real good feeling about. But you always got to look at the roster. You got to look at the actual individual ratings. So let's take a look first at Brandon Tyler. Oh. oh. Okay, so the nine inside scoring is pretty solid. The problem is he's only a seven scoring overall. Now, where he's really, really talented, he's a good rebounder. He's a, oh my God, he's going to lead. If he stays for four years, he'll be the school's all-time leader in blocks. Uh, he's a good enough defender. He's actually the best defender on the team, along with Cherry, Wright, Williams. Shannon's not that great. 
Um, the problem with Tyler is the scoring is only at seven. I would really like if he was going to be like otherworldly. I would like to see him at like an eight or nine on scoring. I mean, a ten would be fine, but uh, seven is is kind of average. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five. I got six players on this team with seven that's scoring. He's really good on the inside, so he should have a good field goal rating. So when you add in the rebounds and blocks, oh, man. He'll probably... He'll probably be the best player on the team. But my word, Alice Cherry is good gonna be solid as well and a good enough jump shooter he can score he can pass he can rebound as a guard he if you look at these rebound ratings come on down here wait okay so chris wright is slightly better and brandon tyler is significantly better so coming from the point guard this is the third best rebounder on the team and oh by the way he's a freshman uh, defender outside of Tyler. He's right there. He's blocks, steals, athlete. Alice Cherry has it all. So maybe we've gotten really lucky here and pulled another Corey Gray. You never know. I think he's a slightly different player. I think Gray was more of a scorer and a three-point shooter. I think Cherry is going to be more of a rebounder and defender. But I'm equally as excited about Cherry as I was about Gray starting off. Obviously, I don't have the same expectations for them because Gray was just like an all-time player at Auburn. But I think Cherry could make a run at it. So I've got hope. And man, how lucky would we be if two schools in a row in the first recruiting class, we brought in the best point guard. Oh, look at the preseason rating, baby. Louisville. Louisville Cardinals at number six, taking on the Houston Cougars. First game of the year in the KFC Yum Center. Let's see. We got a lot. We got a lot of youth. That's going to be our problem. That's going to be our downfall this year is road games and neutral court games. We've got a lot, lot, lot of youth. Very little experience that's actually stepping out onto the court. But a lot of talent. whole lot of talent. Number six in the nation. Uh, starting it off at home and yeah, yeah, yeah. 21 points. And that was Joey Shannon. So we can, we can bounce back and look. Uh, Shannon, 28 points, 13 to 13 from the line. Williams with 19. Tyler with 10 rebounds. He was in a little bit of foul trouble. All right, so we kind of spread it out there. Uh, the guys that kind of disappointed were actually Wright and Cherry, who I think are going to end up being two of our better players. So I'll take that. Very much will take that. As we're pushing 8.30, I'm going to have to go watch The Empire Strikes Back with my kids soon. <laughs> oh, Prairie View with 30-point win over Utah Valley. Wow. Uh-oh, we're playing the Dons, baby. The San Francisco Dons. Back-to-back -back national championship winners in the 50s. I believe that was Wilt Chamberlain, right? Somebody in chat, uh, double-check me there. The San Francisco Dons, the Louisville Cardinals, tip it off. What do we got? What do we got, baby? What do we got? 93. Woo! Woo! Hoo, hoo, hoo. Blew them out. I mean, that was to be expected. But let's see how they did it. With 28 from Shannon. So Shannon, once again, 
going nuts, filling it up. Cherry with eight assists. Tyler throws down the double-double. Chris Wright comes close to a double-double. And the poor bench, <laughs> they just can't do anything because the starters are running it. Starters are running it. All right, 2-0 and to start the season. Yeah, he really does. Uh, Agalia said that Shannon likes to shoot, and he definitely does. But you know what? I mean, if you can make it, you got to do it, right? I mean, if you're making shots. Yeah, I thought I saw something, and then I couldn't quite remember it. So let me go check. That should be our letters of intent. Garnett, White, and Harrington all signed, so we're good there. Let's check the dashboard, see what this injury is. Uh, Drew Mims with a sprained toe. Walk-on point guard. We do not care. We do not care. Look at Joey Shannon on that player impact estimate. Almost 25. Brandon Tyler, 20. Good start to the season for Shannon and Tyler. A couple of freshmen. And a couple of freshmen that we really think we could get at least a few years out of. These aren't necessarily one and dones. Could they be one and dones? Yes. But I love recruiting at this like 15 to 25 in that in that range because you can get such talented players that will stick around for a few years, which is really cool. All right, so number five Louisville headed into Oklahoma, who's one and one, one and one at home. Uh, but we haven't necessarily proven ourselves, so to me, this is 100% a toss-up if Oklahoma's not actually favored. Uh, yeah, they take care of us by 13. That's not a surprise to me. Uh, we we haven't done really anything of note this year, and we've got an extremely young team. So to lose on the road is no surprise whatsoever. Guys, I appreciate y'all sticking with me. We're about two hours and 45 minutes into the stream. We're into November. I think we might get through. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I definitely feel the force calling me upstairs. The Northeastern Huskies, we should run through this. But I feel like anytime you have a uh, an opportunity to introduce... Oh, Jesus. 99 to 43. I feel like anytime you have an opportunity to introduce your children to, like, Star Wars and Indiana Jones, you gotta go do it, right? Like, my son's into it right now, so I have to, like, strike while that iron's hot. Oh, St. Mary's barely pulled one off at UC. 74-72. Three and one. We're number five in the nation for now. Let's see how long this holds. Luvon Cummings taking care of business for Seattle. I think that's the Red Hawks. Headed into Butler. They're one and three, one and one on the year. So this. All right, Agalia. Later, buddy. Yeah, I think the stream's probably going to wrap up before too awfully long. So, um, but make sure you check it out still because I think, well, this will be, this might be the most interesting game for the rest of the stream. Number 12, Louisville, headed into Butler. So they're one and three, one and one at home. Not great. We're hoping we're better this year. Uh, this will be a sign as to whether these young players are as much improved as much of an improvement over last year's roster as I really hope that they are or uh, are we are we just treading water here yeah yo, look at Joey Shannon boys a score I might have another AI on my hands 
Dang, um, he's he's almost going for thirty every game as a freshman. We're gonna call him the answer, Joey Shannon, until he proves that he's not. We're gonna call him the answer. So four and one, nice little win over Butler there. They were, I mean, it was a road game. They're an average team. Uh, probably having a below average season, to be quite honest. But uh, those are those are good games to win on the road when you've got a roster full of freshmen and sophomores. But we've got extremely talented freshmen and sophomores. So now we're playing South Carolina Upstate. If we don't win this, I'm just hanging it up. 20 point win we're still yeah Chris we're uh, number 12 right now we fell back a little bit uh, with the loss that we took earlier but like I said it wasn't a totally unexpected loss and you know the the early season rankings are extremely wonky you know they're they're very elastic there's a lot of movement so five and one number 12 in the nation going into December of 2040 it's crazy to me Now let's take a quick, quick look at these stats. Now you remember Leon Baker, the four and a half star senior, was averaging like seven points and like 5.8 assists and about the same turnovers. So already as a freshman, Cherry's doing better. His three point percentage is about 10 points higher. Field goal percentage is a little bit lower. Uh, and rebounds are actually lower so cherry um uh, i'm sorry baker was a decent rebounder for a point guard but out of a freshman through six games i'm good with that look you guys look 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 at joey shannon <laughs> he's a freshman he's not even like the he wasn't a top 10 freshman he was number 29 in the country 23 points per game. Chris Wright still at about 10. Uh, David Williams and Jason Alexander, a significant fall off. But of course, Alexander started last year. Now he's coming off the bench because we have Brandon Tyler, who's going almost 10 points and uh, over eight rebounds a game uh, and two and a half blocks along with it. So Tyler making a big, big difference on the inside. But Joey Shannon. The story of the season so far. Let's see how long that can continue. Got Illinois State coming in. The Redbirds versus the Cardinals. Uh, is there any real difference there? Like, it's a difference, uh, it's a distinction without a difference, right? Isn't that what they say? Illinois State, Louisville, KFC Yum Center, round ball, what's gonna happen? Yo boy, Chris Wright, Brandon Tyler, doing work. And Louisville moves on to 6-1 and one on the season. Not yet in the conference play. Oh, there's Jared Lifshitz. For St. Mary's. Six and one on the season. Number 12 overall. It's going to be interesting once we get into conference play. These non-conference games honestly aren't telling me much. I would expect if we play some really, really top teams, we're probably going to get handled. Uh, I think this is a team that's like in that five, six, seven seed range in the NCAA tournament. But I do think we're an NCAA tournament team this year. But really, I mean, only conference play is going to tell us. Because I, I was a huge doubter on that first Auburn team. 
and they ended up making like the Sweet 16 out of nowhere, and I thought they were an NIT team, so you can't really trust what I say. Preseason tournament action. Moving toward the middle of December. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Glad Agalia is gone because this this could get ugly. Uh Kentucky four and four, four and one at home. So they are having a down year. We've got an opportunity here. We do have an opportunity. But at the same time, we're on the road against a good team. So the odds are probably stacked against us. <laughs> Brandon Tyler, Joey Shannon. Oh my god, the Where's where's uh where's Dickie V? The diaper dandies, baby! Diaper dandies! Oh the Louisville Cardinals taking out the Kentucky Wildcats two years in a row. Boom, baby. Brandon Tyler and Joey Shannon bring it home for your boys, the Louisville Cardinals. <laughs> oh. That's right, Chris. So seven and one now. Nice little win on the road in Rupp Arena. Now that's a tough place to play. I mean, I'm a Louisville fan. I'll give them credit. It's a tough place to play. Mostly because they like yell at the referees anytime they don't call. All right. It's. I can't even finish that thought. It's such a miserable place to play. But it is tough. I'll give them that. It's tough. Unfair? Yeah. But tough. Missouri State Bears. Oh, is this one of the teams that was giving me crap at Florida a and I think it could have been. Whether it was or not, let's beat them down. Boys, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, only 11, but Joey Shannon. Oh, my God. Joey Shannon filling it up. I don't know what scout rated him at seven scoring along with everybody else. But it's very incorrect. He's very much an eight or nine at scoring. He's our very own AI. All right, so just in our second year with Louisville, we're already 8-1. and one. We're making plays. We're going to be doing big things in the ACC. And then we've got another huge recruiting class coming in. So we're looking great as of right now. Uh, this Louisville team, you know, who knows what happens this year once we get into conference play. But once we get past this year, there's no more NITs. There's no more CBIs, CITs, uh, none of that nonsense. Like we're, it's right back to NCAA tournaments, right back to Final Fours, right back to Sweet Sixteens. Exactly where, exactly when you guys want to tune in and see what's going to happen, it's going to be all about those tournament games. We're going to be winning ACC tournaments. And we're going to be making Final Four runs. So this is probably the last stream where that may not happen. And immediately after this, we're going berserk. Uh, here on December 26, 2040, the Cardinals are going to play the Seminoles at the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center. Probably, probably not a win for us. Probably favoring Florida State here. And they get us by 15. Although Tyler Williams, and I missed the third, but uh, Tyler definitely 
a player. He's trying. He's he's making his presence known even in losses. And that's going to end up helping us out uh, soon enough. Maybe not in that one, but soon enough. All right, now at Virginia is interesting. They're only five and six, so they're a pretty mediocre team. But our problem is we've got so much youth. So can any of our young players step up with another veteran and and get this done, or do we lose on the road at Virginia due to a lack of experience? This is the last game of 2040, folks. Fuck. Brandon Tyler tried. The dude tried. But we felt we lost. So, second year in a row, we drop our first two ACC games. Takes us to 8 and 3. Guys, I suspect we will not start off the ACC 0 and 6 or whatever that terrible start was last year, but uh, we do start 0 and 2. So it is what it is. All right, we're into January. I was kind of, kind of thinking about stopping there, but I don't know what everybody in chat's feeling. Uh, I see there's still four or five people hanging around. Uh, if you guys are hanging with me, I, I can hang out a bit. Uh, maybe we can get through this season. Oh, we got Pittsburgh coming in. This ought to be a win. This ought to get us back on track. The Cardinals and the Panthers. Six and five. They're not having a great season. Take them down, baby. Take them down. Send them back home to Pittsburgh. That's right. 29 points. Williams, Wright, and Tyler doing the work that needs to be done. And we finally get an ACC win. Thank you. Goodness gracious, thank you. Now we got to head to Georgia Tech. And it's an interesting game because they're not great, but they are at home. And with our extremely young team, this probably falls back on a toss-up. It's probably a toss-up. I, I, I think we're slight favorites. But nothing would surprise me here. Yes, yes, yes. Brandon Tyler, Joey Shannon. Joey Shannon, I mean, my God, the dude, if he stays here four years, he's going to be Louisville's all-time leader in points scored. You understand that? I mean, we're only 13 games in, and it's pretty evident. That's where we're headed here. Joey Shannon, uh, just otherworldly scorer. So it's very, very clear. Like, all of our positions are filled. All we need is a little bit of experience and a little bit of depth. And we're going to be, like, rolling. I mean, we're already 10-3, and three, 18 in the country, 2-2 two and two in the ACC. So we're, we're already close. And we're starting three freshmen, a sophomore, and a junior. I mean... Wake Forest coming in. Now, I understand the last time I called for a blowout, uh, I lost. But we should blow them out. So that probably means we're about to lose. Ha <laughs> ha! 26, Tyler, Cherry, Shannon. For the record, that's three freshmen leading the charge, baby. Taking them down. Oh, the diaper dandies. 
What's up, buddy? My assistant coach is entering the arena. About 20 minutes, and then we'll turn on. Do you want to watch Indiana Jones or Star Wars? I don't know. All right. 20 more minutes, we'll come upstairs, and I'll talk about it with you, okay? How many weeks until I'm done? Oh my gosh. Technically about... Uh, 10. Officially. The Cavaliers, the Cardinals. The Cardinals take a home. Chris Wright, Jason Alexander. Jason Alexander is George Costanza, right? Like, I'm not missing anything on that. That's George Costanza. Up to number 15 in the nation. It's crazy with these freshmen that we're doing this. I mean, it was a good class, but geez. You would think you would need a little bit of depth and development. But we're just going nuts on people. All right, so, so here's a good kind of game. Uh, so this is a Clemson team that's pretty decent at home. Um, this will definitely be a marker for the season. This gives us an idea. Like, are we, are we a team that's pushing second round or maybe a threat for the Sweet 16? Or are we still a, you know, borderline kind of NCAA team? So let's see what happens. Oh, my, they fought and won it. All I saw was Williams and Tyler. But they won... So, guys, this is an NCAA team. This is an NCAA team. This is... Mm, mm, they are a threat. They are a threat for the Sweet 16. Any team, to me, that is clearly in the NCAA is a threat for the Sweet 16. Like, those borderline NCAA teams are probably not really that threatening. But, uh, any team that's that's really solidly into the NCAA is very much a threat for the Sweet 16. And that's that's for like one through one through six seeds, I guess, roughly. <clears throat> Headed to Boston College. Uh, let's see if we can double down on this. The number 15 Louisville Cardinals headed in to play the Boston College Eagles at 10 and 7. Yeah! Tyler, again with the double double. I hate to give the guy any credit at all, but Agalia called it. Brandon Tyler is an absolute stud. Absolute stud. This actually brings me back. It brings me back to Tulane. We had B.B. Higgins and Marquette Holmes. Now we got Brandon Tyler and Joey Shannon. I think it's fairly equivalent. I think it's fairly equivalent. Although I think, uh, while Higgins was probably a bit of a stronger rebounder than Tyler, I kind of think Shannon's more of a scorer. Which is crazy because Holmes was an unbelievable score. But I think Shannon's a little bit more of a natural scorer than, than Marquette Holmes. We'll find out. I mean, they'll play out their career. We can see. The number 20 Syracuse Orange coming into the Yum Center. 
They're 13 and 6, 3 and 4 in the ACC. Louisville sitting at 14 and 3, 6 and 2 in the ACC. Let's see how this plays out here in late January of 2041. Your boy, Brandon Tyler, Joey Shannon. Oh my God, he went for 30 again. This dude is incredible. He's incredible. Look at the stats. Oh my God. 16 points a game for a freshman. I mean, David Williams, Brandon Tyler. Brandon Tyler is nearly averaging a double-double, guys. He's averaging a double-double as a freshman. I don't even know what to say. This is... I mean, it's hard to make a quicker turnaround than what we did at Auburn. But this is a quick turnaround. 15 and 3, number 12 in the country, 7 and 2 in the ACC. Let's check out the standings because uh, finishing in the top three of the standings is one of our goals. As of right now, we're there by a game and a half. So we're a game and a half ahead of Florida State. Let's keep it rolling. I got to finish this season. Got to. We're almost to the end of January. We're going to make this happen. Fifteen and three is just incredible to me. In year two. But we did have the huge liftoff in that Alexander and Wright were such good players. And now, like, as time goes on, it becomes more and more evident that Williams is also a very solid player on the inside. Guys, we're still at a hundred followers. I'd love to see it creep over a hundred. I don't know why, but just like something would do it for me if it went to 101. Virginia Tech Hokies, Louisville Cardinals, ACC matchup at the KFC Yum Center. We should dominate this one. We should. They're 2-7 and seven in the ACC. We're 7-2. and two. Yeah, yo. 25 points. We will take it. Moves us to 16 and 3. And got at this point, like it's moving into the category like the same thing we did at Auburn, where like we jumped up and grabbed like a three seed, I think. Like way, 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 way too early in the save. We might be doing the same thing here. We are challenging, like we're very much in line for like a three, four seed. So it's getting kind of interesting. One sec, let me beer me. All right, guys, end of February, end of February, down to the home stretch. Ten games into the ACC, so that means we got ten regular season games left and then the postseason. Let's see what happens. This is going to be awesome. I think we're making a run. I think we're making a run. Number nine. Ooh, we're number nine in the country. That's what we do. The Ville, baby. The Demon Deacons trying to hold off the Cardinals on their home court. This isn't where we slip, is it? We're not going to slip. We're not going to slip. We're not going to slip. Get out of here. Brandon Tyler's not going to slip. Alice Cherry's not going to slip. Doing work. What's up, buddy? All right, 10 minutes. Uh, 
I would let him outside to potty and then give him four treats and then I'll be up there. We'll see how that works. I'm just making shit up. Give him four more. Oh, yeah. Back up to number nine. Chris calling it. We're up to 17 and three. Number nine in the country. Nine and two in the ACC. Nine games left. Let's see if we can grab that three seed. I think that's what we did in our first year at Auburn. And if we do that, I'm pretty sure it's good luck. I mean, nothing official, but should be good luck. Nate Johnson, that's an old Louisville Cardinal. He was a power forward back in the late 90s. Would have been a real good player had he not messed up his hand. Uh, I think he messed up his hand dunking a ball. Anyway, slid back to number 10 after the win. Should take care of Boston College, though. Tyler, Shannon, and Wright. Freshmen and sophomores. Doing all the work. But I do have to think Tyler is the team's MVP at this point. We can take a look. <laughs> 20.7. Even Joey Shannon's only at 17. So, I mean, he's scoring, but, like, Tyler's doing it all. Alice Cherry, the very, very highly recruited point guard. Only at 10. Interesting. Eighteen and three through twenty one games in the twenty forty twenty forty one season. Oh my god, guys. I can't believe anybody is still sitting here watching me. Even Chris. Like it's his it's his own stream. I can't believe he still sits here and watches me after like twenty three seasons. It's incredible. Thank y'all so much. The Cardinals and the Wolf Pack. What is going to happen? Can we pull up? This is a decent team. This is a decent team. We should probably be slight underdogs here. Yeah, we lost. William Shannon Tyler, though. That's sophomore freshman freshman. So, uh, like I said, I, I felt like we were slight underdogs. That's pretty much what happened. Uh... uh I don't know how else to explain it. It's that's what should be expected. You play a you play an above average team on the road with a bunch of young players, you're gonna get beat. Here we go, seven regular season games left, and then it's the postseason. I'll get you through the postseason. We'll see what the recruiting class looks like. See how that draft class looks like, mostly to see if anybody from Auburn goes. The Dukies! Number 10 Louisville Cardinals headed in to play Duke. What is it? What's our arena? Cameron Indoor. <laughs> I don't know how I forgot that. What's up? <laughs> Breeze just recorded your best episode ever. Love to hear it, buddy. I'll check it out. Ah! Couldn't pull off the win at Cameron Indoor. We fall by four points. Down to ten and four. Down to 18 and 5. Let's see if we can avoid 10 losses this year. That's going to be my goal from now. So we're taking on Miami. And I know Miami has at least one player that we really, really wanted at Auburn. And we figured they just went to Miami because Miami had won the national championship that year. So I know they've got talent. The records are pretty equal the ratings aren't that off. This should be a 
pretty close to 50-50 game. I think we have a slight advantage. Oh, we got a big advantage. Oh, D'Antoine Howard, that was him. That was a power forward that we wanted at Auburn. But Brandon Tyler smoked him. Brandon Tyler smoked him. That's our boy. Oh, shh. Nikes. Guys. Oh. I don't know how many times you see this. On stream. We got the number one team in the country. The North Carolina Tar Heels. The home of Michael Jordan. The home of James Worthy. Oh my God. Vince Carter. Antoine Jameson. Uh, Ed Coda. Hey. It's the North Carolina Tar Heels. Number one in the country. Coming in to play the number 10 Louisville Cardinals. I think we're taking them out. I think we're taking them out. We got the team. We got the talent. We're at home. On the road, they would beat us badly. In the Yum Center, we got them. Let's just... We we got them. Ah, 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 fuck. They beat us by 12. Joey Shannon. Joey Shannon had a huge, huge game. 27 points. But uh, Archie Miller. The North Carolina Tar Heels have hired Archie Miller. And they got us by 12. So, uh, it happens. You know, I, I feel really bad, Breeze. I tried. I did everything I could to, like, check them. But uh, we, we couldn't get it. But we still got four games to go. God, I hate losing. I hate losing at home when I've got a decent team. But you know, the thing is, I do have a lot of those players in like that 15 to 25 range. Uh, and I don't have a lot of those players in that like top five. So if they got players in that top five, you can't beat that. You just can't. They're so good. The top of most recruiting classes, the top of the class is just so ridiculous. Taking on the Syracuse Orange. I'm hoping that most of their really solid players bailed on them. No. Oh, oh holy sh... Brandon Tyler suffered an injury. Alright, so now it gets real, folks. Now it gets real. Um, Alexander also suffered an injury. That's a strained calf. He's alright. Oh, God. Oh, thank God. Sprained finger. Eight days. He's alright. Okay, we're alright. We're surviving. We're surviving. Wife's texting me. I didn't see that. 19 and 7, 11 and 6 on the season. Three games left. Need some big ones. Need some big wins. Let's get healthy. Let's take care of Notre Dame. And then let's get onto this ACC tournament and make it happen. Come on, folks. Come on, Cherry. Cherry's a guy, like, I've seen Tyler all over this year. There we go. Williams, right, Shannon. I've yet to see Cherry. What's he doing? He was very highly ranked. I hope we don't have another Baker on our hands. Very much not a score. I mean, if he's just going to facilitate, that's fine. Uh, I mean, Joey Shannon's definitely picking up the scoring. Tyler, when healthy, definitely doing some scoring, but... I'd like to see Cherry making a difference. I'd like him in that top three. Like if you're making a difference with your passing, you ought to have enough assists to get into that top three for sure.
Although I feel like this is a pretty good year. 20 and 7. Facing off against the Miami Hurricanes. Mmm. Tough loss. I mean, Shannon Cherry, you can see all of those young, young players uh, consistently being our leaders. So, I mean, no surprise there. If you're led by freshmen and sophomores, and they're not like these ridiculous one-and-done guys, uh, it's going to be difficult for you. When they're juniors and seniors, though, oh my God, it's going to be on. Number 8, Florida State. Number 11, Louisville. What's going to happen here? This is the final game of the regular season. What a ball game at the KFC Yum Center. Oh my God, I would buy tickets if I could. I'd wear my mask. I would do whatever I have to do. Number, uh, I mean, oh my God, this is a top 10 matchup. In the ACC. Louisville, Florida State. What do we got, fellas? Yeah! Joey Shannon and Brandon Tyler bring it at home for the Louisville Cardinals. L's up. Louisville. Oh, yeah. Let's check out those standings. My word. Right there in the top three. Yes, sir. North Carolina pulled away, obviously, but we're right there with Florida State. That was a huge, huge win because now NC State has to play another game. Hopefully they lose and we get it. Yeah, we're holding down the Yum Center. That's right. You're the dirty bird. <laughs> The KFC usually gives you the greasy chicken, but if you want to call it the dirty bird, that's cool. All right, so here we go. Uh, that should be the end of the regular season for us, and now we're into the ACC tournament. <sighs> Told y'all I'd try my best to get through the season. It's been an effort, I'm not going to lie. i Love to be upstairs watching the Empire Strike Back right now, but uh, Louisville's number 11 in the country. They got a legit shot. I don't think we're the best team. Uh, I'm really more excited to see where Auburn ends up, but you never know. You never know. You get to... If there's anything I've said on the stream, like, way too many times to the point that it's getting annoying, once you get to the Sweet 16, anything can happen. So, we'll see. Oh, you think we're hitting Elite 8, Chris? Oh, I don't know about that. This is a young, this is a young, young team. I think we're a year or two away from the Elite 8. All right, first round ACC games going off right now. Should be second round games. And then we'll drop in in the third round as a top four seed, baby. Three wins gets you an ACC banner. And first, we've got to take on the Miami Hurricanes. They won the national championship just a short few years ago. Can we overtake them? The Louisville Cardinals, the Miami Hurricanes, ACC Tournament Championship Basketball coming to you 
from Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 and GM Games. Get it. Tyler and Cherry, do your thing. Shannon, do your thing. Oh, fuck off. Oh, I want to throw something. Damn it, we lost by two. God. Lost by two. Ugh. So frustrating. I mean, it's a young team. We're still putting it together. But, man, I thought we would get past that round at least. North Carolina. Oh, the good thing is Miami actually made the finals uh, and then got dismissed by North Carolina. So you take the good with the bad. Let's see what actually happens. Get a little selection show here. All right, come on. Next game. Ooh, the Zags in a play-in. <laughs> How the mighty have fallen. UNC gets the number one overall seed in Philadelphia, along with Florida State, St. Mary's, and VCU. Dayton. The Dayton Flyers in Cleveland, your number one seed. Along with the Providence Friars. Sorry. Oklahoma State, Cowboys, New Mexico, Lobos. Villain of a Wildcats in Orlando, Minnesota Golden Gophers, Auburn, the three seed, along with Stanford, the four. And in Oakland, Michigan State grabs the one, Kansas State, the two, San Diego State, the three, and the Louisville Cardinals. Your four seed against the Idaho Vandals. Kent State, Oklahoma, New Mexico State, Iowa State. All right, so we're in Oakland against Idaho. Interesting. I got a stretch. Ooh. Get this all out. <clears throat> We're definitely headed into the end of this stream. I'm so tired and so want to watch some Star Wars with my kid. But we got Louisville and Idaho going head to head on the hardwood. How can you look away from that? That's what you got to focus on. Here we go. The Vandals, the Cardinals. Who's going to the second round of the NCAA tournament? It's your boy. With Shannon leading the way. Let's take a look at that box score. Uh, Shannon with 24. Cherry only 9 points but also 9 assists. Chris Wright with 16 points. And look at Jason Alexander off the bench. 8 for 8. Oh my god. What a player. And we're moving on to the second round. Twenty two and nine. Good, good season. All right, so now in the second round, we are taking on Georgetown, a twelve seed. Oh, interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, baby! Yes, sir! Seven points. I didn't even see who did well. Cherry with 21. No Leon Baker over here. 
Alice Cherry with 21. Joey Shannon with 16. And Tyler throws in with 13 rebounds. Jason Alexander, 6 points and 4 rebounds in 17 minutes. That's not shabby. Looks like Chris Wright had some trouble with fouls. And then Williams actually fouled out. Uh, All right, but we made it. We made it. We're going. On to the Sweet 16. I would have never thought we'd make the Sweet 16 in the second year. Incredible. So good. I mean, Cherry, Shannon, Tyler, right? uh, All five of our starters. Legendary. And we're playing UNLV. The Louisville Cardinals, the UNLV running Rebels in the Sweet 16. What do we got? What do we got here? What do we got? We got we got Louisville Cardinals, right? Tyler, Cherry, you guys got our back? We're good? We're good. All right. Let's do it. Woo! Eight. Team points, baby. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, Williams with 17. Tyler, the dub dub. Cherry, not so great. Shannon, Shannon had an off game. And we survived. That's what happens when you add a little bit of depth. Survive and advance, baby. Ah. Hold on. I almost hit the X in the top right corner, so let me save real quick. Chris, you're always the one that encourages me to dare to dream, and I really appreciate it. I think my dog's locked in the basement, so that's going to get crazy. But uh, I only got to win three more games, and we just call it, uh, I just win, right? I, I just win, I think. Let's keep doing it. Let's keep doing it. Come on, Louisville. Oh, shh. The Kansas State. (laughs) No, if I played uh, Auburn, is so much thoroughly better than I am. Kansas State, I don't know. Oh, look at, hold on. (laughs) Speaking of Auburn, who won that? Who won that? Oh, he can't see it. He can't see it. Uh, we'll get it after this. This is the Elite Eight game. Kansas State Wildcats. The Louisville Cardinals. 27-9 and nine versus 24-9. and nine. Woo! I mean, this, guys, is why you watch NCAA basketball. To see games like this. We've got such a young team. They've made it so far. And you got to give them credit for that. If they fall at this point, so be it. It was a hell of a good year. Let's see what happens. Kansas State Wildcats. Louisville Cardinals. Elite 8. College basketball action. What you got? Oh my God. We lost by one. We lost by one. We lost by one. Oh my God. We lost by one. How? Oh. It hurts my soul. Oh, that hurts my soul. You gotta be shitting me. We lost by one. My dog can feel my pain. He's over here like trying to lick my ribs or something. Oh my god. You gotta be shitting me. We lost by one. Man that hurts. But we made it much further than we should have. 
So let's check this out. Philadelphia, UNC, VCU. Oh, VCU upset UNC pretty significantly and then took out Arizona. Uh, Arizona State knocked out Dayton, then lost to New Mexico, Washington. However, the 10 seed, we got a 10 seed in the Final Four, folks. 10 seed in the Final Four. What else you got? Uh, Villanova lost to Auburn. Auburn's in the Final Four. Those are my boys. And, of course, Louisville here losing to Kansas State. Uh, My boys are in the Final Four. Auburn is winning it. So, it was my second year after I left Tulane when Tulane won. Uh, Here comes Auburn. Here comes Auburn. Lost by one. What a shit show. I mean, I guess. I think Auburn has got so much depth. And that's where we're going to be in like a season or two. Only slightly better because we can add in some of those um, one and done type players that really aren't going to listen to you when you've only got like 75 school prestige. But if you're with Louisville and you got like 85 school prestige, it makes a world of difference. And that's what we're looking for. Sorry, I'm messing with my dog. All right, so Auburn took care of Kansas State. It was a one-point game for Louisville. It was a 19-point game for Auburn. They whooped up on Kansas State. And they're going to play VCU for the national championship. So this is to see, can we go two times in a row where I build a school, I leave a school, and two years afterwards, they win the national championship. My money's on definitely yes. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. Auburn Tigers, baby. Auburn Tigers. We had them set up. War Eagle. <laughs> You're damn right, War Eagle. God bless. Twice. Twice we left the school. Anytime we voluntarily leave, within two years, they're winning the national championship. That's what happens. How many national championships have I won on this game without actually winning it? Uh, let's just say a lot. Look, Walter Sherrill. I recruited Cheryl. He got the most outstanding player. There's Sam Delzel. We tried to recruit him. He ended up going to North Carolina and was amazing. There's De- Look, the whole goddamn thing. Except for Archie Miller. Delzel, we tried to recruit him. Cheryl, he committed to us. And DeAntoine Howard, we were trying to recruit him. We identified every player that's at the top of the individual awards. I mean, I don't know what else y'all need to see to to believe. Like, they say seeing is believing. Like, just look at this. These are all my guys. All my guys. First team All-American. Second team All-American. Claxton, I believe, was another one that we went after. Let's check out the ACC. Yeah, I know Delzell was the number one center. Uh, Here's the ACC's second team. First team, Joey Shannon. Oh, Joey Shannon is a freshman. Joe Claxton, DeAntoine Howard, Sam Delzell. I mean, there are some heavy hitters on this first team all 
ACC. Of course, Delzell's going to take it. And D'Antoine Howard, the defensive player of the year. <clears throat> All right. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing to have teams that you coach keep winning championships immediately after you leave. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. Nobody went to the draft. That's good. Uh, 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 uh. Made the Sweet 16, finished top three. Oh, look at that. We jumped seven prestige points. Oh, it's going to start getting dangerous. Chris says to be proud. I don't know. I'd be prouder if they won the national championship when I was still at the school, you know. Um, Excited to see what this recruiting class looks like. That should be good. See what the draft class looked like. Also fun. Let's go. Finish up the coaching. Jesus. Ooh, look at... Oh. Look at Shannon creeping up and raiding. Alexander Williams. Tyler. Uh huh. Let's petition that board. Tell them we need some facilities. Give us the facilities, please. Please upgrade the facilities. Give it to me. Give it to me. Nah, damn. Two years in a row, we got shut down. Sorry, next year. Next year, we're going hopefully to the Elite Eight, if not the Final Four, or better. We're winning that ACC championship. We're definitely getting some uh, facility upgrade. Come on. Come on. We just want to see the next season's ratings. Any day now. There we go.
Almost. Almost. Here, here we go for real. Here we go for real. All right. Four scholarships. Uh, still, God, $575,000. And we came in ninth that season. Georgia Tech paying that money. Coming in number two. That's all right. They'll be on probation real soon. Guarantee you that. But a top ten class, good with that. Only three, only three commitments. Uh, we're still gonna do that, I guess. Same as usual. We got too much money. I don't even know what to do with it. Nobody transferring. Good to know. Man, nobody transferring. This this team's going to be sick. So Wright and Alexander are now juniors. Everybody else that was starting is now sophomores. Add in those freshmen behind them for depth. It's going to be crazy. I think we still need another center. But outside of that, man, we are looking like a solid team. And that's what I'm talking about. Like you build this team up, and then like you just rock and roll for like 10 seasons. And you're just giving yourself chance after chance after chance to win national championships, to make Final Fours. When you have a team with this kind of depth, look at how this depth has changed from our first season to this season. Cherry, Harrington, the freshman, Shannon looking good, uh, Garnett could be better, not going to lie, right, solid, oh my god, white <laughs> with five stars, he's our highest rated player right out of the gate as a freshman, and then Alexander, Williams, and Tyler. So here we are where I was talking about, where you've got a very definable top three on the inside, two wing players, and three guards. That's what you're looking for. This team will absolutely, absolutely make the Sweet 16 and then compete for it all. Once you make the Sweet 16, who knows what happens. So let the AI suggest it'll do the same thing as I would do. All right, folks, let's see what this draft looks like. Mm. This team's looking dangerous. Dangerous! Uh, 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 2041. We're in 2041. Holy crap! The pro draft. Let's see if there's anything of interest to us. Uh, Kurt Chambers from Auburn goes in the first round, number 29. Probably going to be about it. Oh, there's Perry Leach, the point guard. Did he go after his junior season? Or was he a senior? I'm not certain. Either way, recruiting has begun. I'm going to save it here, guys, and get out. Uh, you missed us. I don't even know how to explain what you missed, Breeze. Pretty much everything. Uh, anyway, we deleted everything. Let me save again to be sure. But, yeah, we got... Uh, I mean, our, our team looks like it's going to compete for an Elite Eight and for a championship this year. Uh, so I don't really know what else to say, guys. Um, we're there. We've